Plastic Planet. With your host, it's Nick Nick. guys we are live on the plastic planet i am your host nick knack hanging out with you guys tonight and i just want to say this is our first ever ever simulcast here on the plastic planet i bet my two good uh, friends here uh, didn't know they were sitting with a network executive but that's right i own my own youtube network now we have two channels that's right we have the flagship channel nick knack's plastic planet as well as nick knack live and i'm going to get to the rationale to that in just a moment but if you are watching this on Knickknacks Plastic Planet, the flagship channel, I do encourage you to go to Knickknack Live and hit the subscribe button for that channel. And I'll get, I'll get to more uh, detail into that in just a moment. But first of all, I just want to welcome my awesome collecting compadres in crime here tonight. I am joined by the ever awesome Austin Volvo, a.k.a. the AV Club. What is up, sir? Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? It's uh, another great Thursday night. Looking forward to... Talking about some uh, collectibles and retro gaming. That's right, man. We're gonna talk. We are gonna be talking about. We are gonna be talking about some collectibles. We got a lot of collectibles to talk about. Uh, a lot of hot toys to talk about tonight. Uh, so that should be pretty damn exciting. And uh, let's get to Harry Java, aka Trav. What's up, sir? Hey, hello, everyone. Happy to be here and happy to discuss how we can all throw away our money, man, on uh, very kick-ass stuff, though. So that's right. That's right. A lot. Here we of go. Shit. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. So. We are hanging out with you guys tonight, and this is Nick Nack Live. I do have to mention that Uncle Pat is on hiatus tonight. Uncle Pat had to work, and uh, since uh, since Uncle Pat uh, gave uh, AV a little shit last week about <laughs> two weeks ago about um about about him having to get his wisdom teeth out and having to take a hiatus, uh, AV Club, you you can you can give Uncle Pat any amount of shit you want right now. <laughs> no, no, I'll take the I'll, I'll I'll take the high ground on this one. I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll keep my powder dry. Ah, he's a good man. He's a good man as always. The AV Club man. He's all character. All character. Yeah, man. AV, I wanted some fireworks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a good. He's a good man there. The yeah. AV Club. Yeah, no. So um, so yeah, guys. So what do you? It is. It is Wednesday night. It is happy hour up here in the Plastic Planet. And what is everybody drinking tonight? I'm gonna go to Trav first. Yeah. So I'm continuing on my uh, world tour of the various salsa and vodkas, and. Truly, man, I'm loving the Trulies. I've tried the the nudes, the white claws, but I think I'm settling on these as my favorite. So, cracking beautiful. back and uh, quenching the thirst, the good old Truly tonight. Beautiful, beautiful. How, how about you, Av? What do you got to drink? Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to go to the liquor store tonight, so I'm going with my old standby with the uh, Moscow Mule and the uh, Broncos uh, Copper Mug. It's nice. always, uh, you know, it always does me well. So uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm rocking with tonight. Very nice, very nice. Well, I, of course, am drinking my standard uh, BL, Bud Light, because I'm boring. But I always try to, like, showcase off a different glass tonight. And tonight I am drinking out of this glass. And I have no idea where this restaurant is, but apparently I ate at it at some point. And I don't know if you guys can see this. It says, uh, Big Ass big ass Beer from Dick's Last Resort. I'm not sure where that is. Huh. Maybe that's in, that might be in San Diego. I'm not sure. Maybe I got this at Comic-Con in San Diego. I don't remember. But anyway, so that is what I am drinking tonight. But let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it. Let's get to a little bit of. You started food. off with big ass. I thought you were talking about some club or something, man. No, nothing, nothing like, like that. that. I think it was like a bar and grill. I think they had pretty good wings, if I recall. But uh, let's get to the chat real fast before we get too far into this. Falling Freddy is hanging out with us tonight, as well as Danny Lee and Cesar M. And uh, and Chetel Grievous 2005. So thank you guys so much for joining us here on the Plastic Planet. It's awesome to have you guys here tonight. So anyway, guys. So here's what is going on. Um, I have upgraded my stream yard so you guys can see I've got that delightful knickknacks plastic planet logo up there in the corner uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in instead of the, uh, the the little plucky stream yard duck which I didn't mind the stream yard duck he was a little little plucky little fellow uh, but how can you hate on a duck but um, you know can you name one duck that sucks I mean like Daffy duck Donald duck stream yard duck Geico duck I like them all Howard duck. what's that Howard 
Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, the movie did suck. Yeah, Howard the Duck did suck. But anyway, so anyway, we have upgraded a little bit here. I don't know how long we'll keep it this way, uh, but that is for the simulcast tonight. We, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we are simulcasting to both uh, Nick Knack's Plastic Planet, the flagship channel, and Nick Knack Live. And the reason for that, and I've talked about it a little bit in my videos, but I'm going to cover it one more time for you guys, uh, just 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 for full, full, full transparency. Uh, the reason for that, guys, is that the live stream, we've been doing this live stream going back to April, and it has been kicking ass. I have been so happy with the amount of interaction with the live stream. It is such a great way for me and, and my friends, my awesome friends, to hang out and talk collectibles with you guys. And it's a great way to talk to you guys, my awesome super subscribers out there. And I love, love, love the interaction and just, just the, the overwhelming response and warmth we've gotten from running the live stream uh, has been really, really good. And our, and our views have been awesome. It's, 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 it's been awesome. But YouTube likes – YouTube has it out for small creators. They really do. Um, while the live stream was really doing well, I was noticing on the channel my new subscriber growth was going in the toilet. And last month, the last 30 days, I actually, for the first time since starting the channel, I, I netted, a, 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 I took a net loss in subscriber growth for the first time since I started the channel. Now, that could be two things. A, maybe I suck. And that's a possibility. But but I actually had some really good videos. I put out some hot toy reviews. It was I got a lot of good views. I don't think that's the case. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Mr. YouTube man, but you know, I don't think I totally suck. Or B, the live stream is dragging us down in the algorithm because of the YouTube likes shorter content and having these two two hour, 40 minute videos up in my channel, I think was dragging us down in the algorithm and it was kind of hiding my other content. So two choices. One, kneecap the channel and, and, and not get much more sub subscriber growth. And I'm a competitive guy. I, I just can't help it. I want to keep growing this channel. Um, you know, I, I'm competitive, friendly, of course, with my contemporaries here on YouTube. And uh, my channel growth has been pretty slow as it is. But uh, so I don't really want to kneecap my channel growth. Or B, kneecap the live stream by either not doing it, which would be a crime because I think we have a great time doing this live stream, or putting it on another channel, uh, which also kind of sucks because then it's like, Basically, we're I'm kneecapping the, the live stream because starting a channel fresh also sucks. So I'm kind of trying to do a, a little a little bit of a compromise in both. I'm going to run the live stream simulcast on both channels, Knickknack Live and Knickknack's Plastic Planet. Now, if you uh, if you're joining us late or if you watch the typically watch the uh, live stream on repeat, you're going to need to see it on Knickknack Live because it will not live at Knickknack's Plastic Planet past broadcast. Uh, past its broadcast. I always say broadcast. I'm from a broadcaster background. Past its streaming date, basically. It might stay up for about 12, maybe 24 hours tops on the flagship channel. Then it will be unlisted. But you can see it and all of our other live streams archived at Knickknack Live. And I really want to kind of make Knickknack Live just so that it's not, and, and I, I apologize for the redundancy, guys. I know subscribing to two channels kind of kind of stupid. Um, I apologize for that. Um, I mean, personally, I have like I'm subscribed to like 300 channels, so it really wouldn't bother me. But I know some people are a little more uh, militant about how many channels they subscribe to, and they want to keep their subscriber list very organized and neat. And I understand that, and I apologize. But I will try to make it worth your while. We will try to make Knickknack Live that channel into more of an insider channel for the Plastic Planet. Um, you will not only see the live streams over there, I'll try to post some exclusive content over there. And I can post a little rougher content over there too. Not, you know, don't, no, I'm not talking about a Tijuana donkey show or anything, but I mean, it could be a little more, a little more liberal over there that I don't really worry about. Like, I don't really worry. That's that, that, that channel is kind of like a rental car. I don't really worry about scratching it up too much. Whereas the main plastic planet channel I've been working at for three years and this is my baby and, and I, you know, and all my videos live here and, you know, the videos is really what it's all about, but the live stream is such a great way to keep in touch with you guys. And so I want to keep that going, but I also don't want to kneecap it. So that is the sort of the compromise. Again, we will broadcast simultaneously on both channels, but the live stream will not live on the flagship channel. It will be unlisted within 12 hours of its stream. But it, you can always catch it on repeat at Knickknack Live. And that's why I encourage you to go and subscribe to Knickknack Live as well as the regular channel. Anyway, so there it is, guys. That's 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 channel business. And I really appreciate you guys listening to me. And thank you, everybody who is watching us on repeat. Um, it's really critical for you guys. And we do get a lot of repeat viewers for you guys to uh, to go and subscribe to Knickknack Live. And the, the, the link to that channel is in the descriptor in the, in the descriptor field uh, on Knickknacks Plastic Planet to this live stream. So you can just go in there and click on it. And it's also in a couple of my, my two most recent videos as well. So anyway, that is that. 
let's get on to new business, guys. Let's get on to um, let's get on to new pickups this week. Uh, so let's just let this get going. Enough of that stuff. Uh, anyone? Uh, how about let's start out with uh, let's start out with the AV Club. If, if you if you will, AV, did you pick up anything this week? I did not pick up anything, but uh, I'm still waiting for my uh, my Iron Man to come in from uh, Sideshow. But you know, given the theme of tonight's episode uh, in the later hour, I, I I do have. I wanted to show off some things. I have. Uh, I got a Master Chief helmet. Uh, I bought nice. this. One, I bought this when uh, Halo Three came out. I'm a big I'm a big Halo fan. You know, so this is a uh, you know John Spartan 117. You know, and it's a uh, you know pretty badass. I still have this. I still have this on display. My wife hasn't given me crap. Wait, how much before. was that bad boy? What's that? How much was it? I, it was like a hundred bucks total. I mean, it was a good. Yeah, I thought it was a good deal because it was like you you bought you bought Halo Three and that for about a hundred bucks. Sweet, yeah, that's so a big that piece. Was, that was back in 2007. So you know, uh, yeah, I love I love the I love the Halo series. And then uh, also here, I got these suckers on display in my uh, game room. Uh, this is from the um, video game Mass Effect. This is the uh, Normandy. And, you know, I just, uh, I love Mass Effect so much. I really think it's one of the greatest uh, sci-fi stories. Uh, probably the, my favorite sci-fi story uh, after Star Wars. Uh, it's uh, just an incredible, incredible trilogy. And uh, I would highly recommend it to anybody. So wait, I haven't seen it. I might have to fire that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, uh, you know, I was, I was really, I mean, if you've, if you've seen the Expanse, the on Amazon, there's a lot of things uh, that are very similar about the Expanse that uh, uh, originated in Mass Effect. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I, that's what I got. Nice man, that's very good, very good. Let's just go to the chat really fast. Danny Lee is here. He says, "What's up, everybody?" And um, and let's see here. And uh, uh, General Grievous two thousand five says, "Nice Megatron on the TV there." Yeah, I got the. I got Transformers Season 1 playing, but it's on pause. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on over there. Uh, General Grievous 2005 says also, what about Darkwing Duck? Well, I, I don't have any venom for Darkwing Duck. I thought he was kind of cool. Did you guys watch Darkwing Duck back in the day? Oh, yeah. Dark, I thought Darkwing Duck was cool, man. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah. No, come on. <laughs> one, of my, uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, like tweets uh, that when Disney Plus came out was uh, – there? I forgot the name of the comedian, but he said, like, basically, if you guessed uh, – that when Disney Plus came out, that I would just be uh, smoking marijuana and watching Darkwing Duck all day. Give yourself like you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you're great. You know, I don't know. He said like you're correct or something along those lines, but you know, very funny that he was just binge watching Darkwing Duck of all the of all the content we released. That was what he was most excited about. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, following Freddie says, take the live show up another notch while you're at it. Make it in 3D. Yeah, <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping it going as it is, but uh, right. yeah, we'll, we'll get right on that. And Kev's Matrix is in the house. Kev, what is up, buddy? It's good. Uh, I always love when Kev joins us. Uh, he says, uh, Zod should be flying high in front of uh, the Coke sign, ready to fight soups. Uh, LOL, what's up? Yeah, he's talking about my awesome um, Coca-Cola sign back there. Uh, yeah. I, I've been, I showed that off on the channel. I also showed it off on Knickknacks, Plastic Planet on Facebook. Pick that son of a bitch up. I guess it's it's might be my turn for new pickups. I'll mention it. Um, I picked that son of a bitch up at a, a antique store. Got it for twenty eight bucks. Guy wanted forty. It was all dinged up and gross. Took it home, scrubbed it off in the in the backyard with you know just a just a just a like an SOS pad and a and some water and got it all cleaned up. Just it was just, just grime on the back side of it, especially because you know it had been in some kind of like you know basically fluorescent housing. I'm sure for forty years. Um, sure. You know it's old school nineteen seventies. And then all I did was I hung it up with some fishing wire from my rafters. When you have an open ceiling, your display options are wide open in a sense because you can you can you got so much play with stuff as opposed to having you know a real you know having a you know a, 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 a you know drywalled in ceiling. Right. So I so I so I got that hung up there uh, with some fishing wire, and then I also put behind it some uh, two LED so it's not a fire hazard. Two LED uh, fishing uh, uh, I'm sorry, fishing lights, uh, <laughs> desk lamps. So uh, it looks really damn awesome. And then I also, behind me, uh, since I've been on, on the live stream, I also put a vinyl uh, brick wall uh, that I got from, like, uh, Amazon. It's basically like a party prop. But it's a nice, you know, it's a nice uh, nice quality vinyl. And you can't tell the difference between my fake brick wall and AV's real brick wall. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that works, man. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty sweet, man. I mean, that whole entire background you got set up, I mean, that screams uh, 1980s to me. That's fantastic. That's, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, I'm loving it, man. I love it so much. I just I come down here and I'm just in, 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 in wow of my in awe of my own uh, my own. Age, <laughs> sure. uh, and not to, not to, you know, not to, yeah, I know, I know. Not to, not to, uh, yeah, not to, yeah. Not to pat myself nice too addition, much. Man. Man. Nice addition. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. Totally. So anyway, so I'll get to my new pickups. We'll let Trav go. Well, we'll let Trav go last. Um, and um, let's hear. I picked up, and um, I hope the live stream's still going here. We got a little, little bit of a, a breakup here. Um, so anyway, I, I'll just keep going. I got this awesome Pizza Hut uh, fucking <laughs> model kit. Yeah. Oh, there we are. We're back. So I got this Pizza Hut model kit. I picked this up off uh, eBay. Uh, for I don't know, um, I paid like 20 bucks for it, and it's eventually going to go up in my HO uh, my HO train set up here in the in the ceiling of the art in the in the archive. Oh, cool. the yeah. But uh, I just had to get it. I just thought I just felt like I really needed a, a Pizza Hut uh, model kit in my collection. I actually met my wife outside of Pizza Hut back in the year 2000. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she. We both had friends that worked at the, at the Pizza Hut. Yeah. And we were watching fireworks from the pizza parking lot. Not that we were all like eating pizza or anything, but we had two, we both had mutual friends that worked at pizza hut and actually her sisters worked there and my friends worked there. And so I met her outside of a red roof pizza hut. So this is kind of special, not to mention, I just love pizza hut from the 1980s. Do you guys have any really good iconic pizza hut memories? Cause I sure. Yes. The buffet. Miss I yeah. missed the buffet. I mean, the pizza hut buffet was a dream come true, man. It was like all you could eat for like, Four or five ninety nine, man, and it was the good stuff and the breadsticks and everything. Yeah, no, it was. That, jam. It was. Jam. Yeah, yeah, no, I was like, bring that back. yeah. I have, I have nothing but positive memories about Pizza Hut when I was a kid. I remember living in Oregon in a town of like twenty thousand, and going to Pizza Hut was an event. You know, when you're six or seven years old, and I remember like you know just uh, playing t tabletop Pac Man, waiting to get seated at the Pizza Hut in uh, Cor Corvallis, Oregon. You know, it was, yeah. it was great. Yeah, you know the the solid red plastic cups. So you'd get you'd get Pepsi in because of course Pepsi's a pizza. Pizza was a had Pepsi, and uh, man, you get a you get a pep you get a you get a nice Pepsi out of a red cup with the pitcher, and you're playing some Miss Pac Man or some, some yeah. Donkey Kong, yeah. waiting for a waiting for a fucking pan pizza, you know. And it's like Friday night, and it's 1985, and that was good. And then your parents on the way out decide what the hell. Let's get the Pepsi Pizza Hut uh, a jug. And so you get the jug, and they fill it up with Pepsi for you on your way out, and you're sitting in the car drinking the jug all the way home. Anyway, maybe that's why I have some weight issues as an adult. But, yeah, I love Pizza Hut. Sure. That's you, better, man. Do you remember uh, Do you remember when we, uh, Nick Knack, when we were in fourth grade, the reading program? I do. Where, I do. Yeah, where you, if you read, like, every book you read got you, like, closer to getting a small pizza from Pizza Hut. Yes, it was a personal pan pizza. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, yeah, that was awesome. That was like the that was like the greatest incentive for a nine year old. Oh, totally. totally. <laughs> I love sticker. Like, yeah. I'm scared of these books, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. totally. Just, just just disclaimer. Uh, Av and I were in elementary school together, so we we, we ever like if we if you're just joining us, if we haven't mentioned that, uh, that's why uh, we may be sharing mutual memories. Yeah. There. Yeah. So, yeah. So moving on, I did get another thing. I'll show these off on in a video on the main plastic planet at some point as well. But I did pick up this KO Ratchet. I think I showed this off in the box in my last video, but I still haven't got him out yet. So I picked up this guy. This guy's going to be awesome. This is a KO, but I got him off Amazon.com from a really good seller. Um, came within two weeks. And I have the Ironhide coming, too. I haven't gotten him yet. I should probably check on him. Um, he might be somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean right now on a on a, on a ship <laughs> on, on, a, on a big shipping boat. But uh, really damn cool. This is a knockoff, but these knockoffs are great. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I should be more respectful to, uh, Hasbro's intellectual property and not, not, uh, not support this sort of thing. But you know what, considering this guy goes for like 160 bucks and the knockoff goes for 40 and they're almost identical. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to go with the knockoff. It's it, it really is. I feel kind of bad about it, but not too bad. So I got that. That's pretty epic. And then I also got these for my, uh, my, my train set up there, my uh, my ceiling train set. You gotta have in a train set. You gotta have some. Uh, you gotta have some trackside shanties for the uh, for the for the hobos to hang out in. Yeah. So, <laughs> that. so that's pretty cool. And then to go along with the pizza, and I've showed this off before. I'm gonna show it off again. Um, and I, I got the 1970s Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, Dude, 
That is, that is so awesome. It's so fucking. It's got the. Yeah. It's got the bucket. It's got the bucket. The you colonel. Know? The colonel. <laughs> it's got the bucket. And you know, I was saying on my video, maybe this is kind of my way of just sort of like celebrating the fact that I've kind of given up. That I'm like that I'm like making monuments in my collection to my favorite fast food restaurants. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But there's like some days, like some days when I have a really bad day. I have a really bad day at work. I have a really bad day. I don't want to deal with anything. I just want to sit in front of the TV, watch some football, watch some baseball, watch a movie. <clears throat> and I always say to myself, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get a bucket. Yeah. Dude, dude, I tell you what, that shit yeah. is real, man. You get a bucket of, uh, of chicken, the oxycontin in your brain, man, it it, it flies, man. It's oh, a real yeah. feeling, man. It, it's great. Yeah, yeah, you can't beat original recipe chicken. You yeah. just can't. Now, um, I used to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken in high school, and uh, I know the difference between original recipe and extra crispy. Now, original recipe, you only took one roll through the dough. And then you put it on the, the 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 little racks and then put it into the pressure cooker. Okay. The, the extra crispy, you took one roll through the extra crispy dough or the flour. I'm sorry, the extra crispy flour, which is a special flour, and then you take it out and put it in a strainer, dip it in water, then roll it back through the dough again so it gets the crispy crispies, and oh, then God. you put it in the pressure cooker. And that's the difference between original and extra crispy at Kentucky Fried Chicken. So. Uh, so yeah. So the main question is, what's your favorite side there at the old KFC? Side? Yeah. Oh, it's got to be the mashed potatoes, man. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Even though it's all like just re rehydrated powder. <laughs> but it's I was always partial to the to the mac and cheese, man. The mac and cheese mac, there is the damn mac good. And cheese is good. Now I have a really like I have a really like horrid affluency to the coleslaw, because when I worked at KFC, I used to have to clean out the coleslaw bin at the end of the night. Okay. And you would you would you would have the hot water hose and the coleslaw was like this giant bit, you know, and you'd hit that hot water with the coleslaw and your head's right there. And man, that mayonnaise smell would just like knock you <laughs> on your head. It was so foul. It was, I would rather, I mean, honestly, I would rather clean the bathroom at KFC than clean the coleslaw <laughs> bin. I believe it. <laughs> anyway, so we're getting off course here. We're getting off course. Um, okay, so I got a couple more figures. I showed these off on my uh, last video too. I got uh, Obi One from Episode Two, Black Series. Black Series is just looking great. I can't wait to get this guy out. I'll show him off in better detail when I open him on the Plastic Planet. And I got the Anakin Episode Two as well. So really fantastic looking figures. Really excited to have those. And uh, and then one more thing, and I'm not going to open it right now, but I, and I do have a mystery box here that I will reveal on the Plastic Planet. Uh, make sure I'm not showing off my address. Um, I do have a mystery box here I'm going to reveal on the Plastic Planet. And What's in the box? What's in the box? It's a mystery box. It's a G1 Transformer. That's the hint. It's a grail. People throw around the term grail a little too much, but this is a grail. And uh, I'm very excited to open this. So I'll open this up on the Plastic Planet in the next couple days. So, um, yeah, so that's my pickups for this week. Uh, let's go to the chat before we go to travel one more time. And um, let's see here. Uh, is Baz is in the house, man. It's good to see him. And uh, and uh, he says Mass Effect is better than Star Wars. Maybe right now, yeah. I, okay, maybe right now, yeah. And if following Freddie says, I also have that Master 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 Chief also Austin. So uh, following Freddie has that piece as well. So oh, pretty damn right. awesome. Trav, let's Very go cool. to pickups, man. You had a big week. I did have a big week. You know, it's funny. It wasn't that long ago, Nick Knack, when I was sitting at Zero Hot Toys. Um, but I ordered a, uh, three of the Mandalorian uh, figures that I got on order, and um, I was looking at some pictures of Deluxe Palpatine and the Royal Guards, and I realized that's just a set I have to have. So I'm happy to announce and to show everyone, look what came in today. Oh, beautiful. So I got them all, and I, I just love how they set up together. You know, the, the Royal Guards really set off the Palpatine there. And dude, this light up throne is dynamite. So happy to have that, man. I'm excited as I'll get out. I'm definitely on the hot wing bagging, but yeah, man, it, it was a it was a huge week for me for sure. Oh, that is awesome, dude. That is just killer, dude. Nice job, cool. dude. Nice job. So um so here's a here's an uncomfortable question. And yeah, man. You can decline to answer. How much did you pay? You know what? So he, he had an offer in there, and I I low bid him, and it all worked out. I low bid it for uh, for nine fifty, and so a little bit more than retail, but not that much more when you consider shipping and everything else. No, because the um, the, guard, the guards themselves were going for about two hundred five each. Yeah. Show, and then then 
the Emperor and the Throne was a little over three hundred. It so was. I, so you put you put shipping on that and everything else. Yeah, not bad. You didn't do bad, man. You didn't do bad for three figures that are now out of out of uh, you know um, are, are now on the secondary market pretty officially. So you didn't right, do and that's kind of the penance you get for not not buying things right um, when they're when they're open, right? You're forced to back collect, but. This was one that it really seemed to hold up for me. So I was like, it's worth it to go back like that. Oh, hell yeah. Well, good for you, dude. And good for you. for. So how many Hot Toys figures do you have now? Did you mention that already? Yeah, so six now. So six. when the other three okay. come, six. So it went from zero to six in pretty short order. Yeah, that's wow. fucking awesome, dude. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I was, I was just, while you were talking, I don't mean to, to, to be distracted. I was actually turning off my other computer over here because I was having some internet cutouts here. And I was just trying to lessen the bandwidth a little bit. Um, so, yeah, sorry I didn't hear that. But, uh, yeah, that's freaking awesome, dude. It's a good yeah, I'm to seeing how you have that displayed uh, when you when you get it all set up. Yeah, yeah, you know what? If you when you get figure when I got these, I'm like, holy cow! I really got to think some things out. You know what I want to do with some with these hot toys and some of the other ones. So it might take me a little bit of time, but I'm gonna get it and uh, hopefully do it right here. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that is freaking cool. That is really freaking cool. Well, all righty, guys. Well, we, normally we do do some uh, subscriber pickups today. I don't have any to show off. Well, I do have some to show off. I was sent some, but I, well, we'll get to a, a bigger batch next time. Um, I just didn't get to uh, get a chance to get in and do the PowerPoint presentation this, today. I was pretty busy with work and uh, everything else. But So I, I appreciate everyone that sent uh, submissions for uh, collector pickups, and we will get to you guys next week. I do promise you that. So, uh, yeah, let's just keep going, though. Let's just keep going. And let's go to my favorite part of the show, which is Buy Squatter Pass. And uh, let's get going, guys. We've got a ton of stuff to get to. And uh, let's, just, let's just get going. Let's just get into it. Right. And let's get into the star of Buy Squatter Pass tonight because this figure is getting a ton, a ton of uh, noise on the Internet. And uh, let's just get into it right now. Um, let me get into the share screen here. And go into the Chrome tab. Sorry, guys. And... Um, Internet's lagging a little bit, guys. Sorry. It's all good. There it is. You seen that? It's not coming up yet? No. I don't want to see anything. Um, hang on. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties here. We Sorry. will get to it. Chrome tab. Sorry, guys. There it is. Here we go. Okay, she's it's up. up. Okay. So we are looking at the Ahsoka Tano from Hot Toys. Um, let me uh, get out of there. Okay, there she is. $250. Uh, she doesn't come out until October of 2021, uh, uh, tentatively. And damn, she looks awesome. Um, I am shocked that it took Hot Toys or Sideshow, for that matter, this long to get to this character. Uh, there she is standing next to Anakin to give you a sense of scale. Beautiful figure. Um, again, like most of these uh, Clone Wars animated characters, they're giving them a little bit more of a hybrid, I think, between the animation and what live action would look like. you got a good indication of that right there. Look at her eyes. Yeah. Uh, really, really nice. This, of course, is Ahsoka Tano, I think, as seen in season... Uh, the last season, what was that? Season seven? Seven. Season, yeah, season the last seven. one. Yeah, season seven of the Clone Wars. So there she is. Uh, yeah, there she is. That's a really good shot. Looking really, really beautiful. Um, got some kick ass accessories there. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, now everyone here watched that that season finale, right? Yep. Yeah, and that's, dude, that's a, I love that she comes with all that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, she really does. There she is with uh, Captain Rex, I believe. Yeah, looking really cool. There's all of her accessories. So look at this. She comes with uh, she comes with a hollow uh, display uh, 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 communicator with uh, Yoda and Obi Wan and Anakin, which is really cool. She comes with a thermal detonator. Uh, she comes with uh, multiple lightsabers. One with the swinging effect. Uh, one is the her longer saber. The others are shorter. Um, multiple hand accessories. Uh, standard display base, and of course that uh, and of course that Jedi cloak. And I just totally hosed up my internet here. Hang on a second. Sorry, guys. My screen, my screen just went completely dark. I can still see you on my end. Yeah, I, I just, I just can't see you guys. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Um, 
Yeah, it's just run. Everything is running painfully slow here. I don't know why we're having bandwidth issues here tonight. Hmm. Um, there, okay. There she is. Okay, there I'm back. I'm just not gonna. I'm just not gonna hit that. Uh, hit that magnify glass again. Anyway, so there she is. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is a very popular figure. This thing is blowing up the internet. A lot of people are pre-ordering her uh, that I could see throughout all of the uh, different uh, collectible forums that I've uh, that I'm in personally. And uh, what do you guys think, though? Let's go to Trav first. Buy squat or pass, man? It's a buy. I think it's a first pass buy, man. Um, the two late, the two lightsabers. She's way overdue. Um, I think they nailed. I mean, Hot Toys does a hell of a job. We all know this. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of, you know, a, a basic rule of thumb I would say is if there's a if there's a Star Wars hot toy for me coming out that's kind of from the creator. This is season seven, so I mean, you can argue it, but uh, you know, a hot toy figure from the creator, it's a buy, man. I mean, that that thing's sweet, and I think the detail on it's perfect. Um, she, to your point, she's long over overdue. Now there's a general giant Ahsoka. And knickknack in the in the collector's back market, man. She goes she goes for 10x of what she did originally. Yeah. Um, so the collectors out there have been longing uh, for Ahsoka, right? Who's the quote unquote new star of the Clone Wars? Uh, that wasn't in, in any of the movies, right? New, She's the new star, star that was new star of the franchise, arguably of the franchise. Yeah. So yeah. so I think she's a must represent um, because of that. And um, if you can, rep you know, and the way to do that would be in the premium format here, man. So it's a buy. Yeah, well, yeah, the the Hot Toys figure. Yeah, I agree. Um, just just go to the chat real fast. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Danny Lee says it's a buy for him, and General Grievous says buy. I just pre-ordered her. Three places are sold out of her already. Uh, wow. Tom Walker Toys is waitlisted. Uh, Big Bad Toy Store is sold out, and uh, and AE. I don't know what what AE is. I think is sold out of her as well. So yeah, maybe it might be just time She's to gonna go quick, her. man. She's gonna yeah, go maybe, quick. Maybe I might just you know what I'm on the fence. I am a firm squat, but maybe I should just buy. Uh, this is one of those figures again. I don't collect for monetary rationales, but this is one of those figures that will uh, dramatically jump in value once she hits the secondary market. Per your point, Trap, um, I think she will. She will, man. I'd love to hear why you're a squat, man. Uh, you know what? I just uh, I'm I'm just sort of lukewarm. I love the Clone Wars. I'm not. I love the Clone Wars. I love Ahsoka. Ahsoka as a character like grew on me like tremendously. Like the season. I remember back in the the Clone when the Clone Wars first came out uh, in theaters. The the Clone Wars um, uh, uh, theatrical release. The first basically yeah. four episodes, three episodes, um, and then maybe season one. I was just not a big fan of hers. I just thought she was kind of a. I used to call, I used to call her a scrappy do. You know she. Right. Was, she was, no, I, I I remember you telling me about how much she uh, great graded on you. Yeah, I, I used to. Yeah, she's like yeah the puppy power thing and stuff. Um, but you know she used to call Anakin Sky Guy and shit. And just annoyed right, the fuck. Yeah, she annoyed the fuck out of me. But but like a good character, she just grew and grew and grew on you, and she matured. And they and and Dave Filoni did and George Lucas for that matter, and the writers on that show did such a great job of maturing this character. Um, that I just, that, that, yeah, she has great character development a, a great depth. Um, she's a great character. That's, that's, that's the short of it. Um, so yeah, she's, she's, I'm squat, but maybe I'll just lean into buying just cause I think that if I hold out per, you know, general Grievous's comment and he yeah. says, do it, um, he might be she, right. She'll be gone. You, you know what my only hesitation is when I saw this come out would be, you know, she's going to be in the Mandalorian too. And she's probably going to do some spinoffs, you know. The only thought that went in my mind would be, you know, would I rather have a, a, a version of her from the live action movies? Um, that was, That's my only hesitation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. She this 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 whole thing now that we have a Ahsoka figure. I mean, this is like this is like a, a you know, this is like a, a, a drunk, a drunk chick at a college party, man. The seal is broken. There's going to be a million more of these coming out now. Um, yeah. I totally okay. believe that. I'm surprised it took this long. Honestly, the only Ahsoka I have in my collection is I have a Black Series and I have an old Hasbro uh, Clone Wars uh, three and three quarter inch Ahsoka. It's the only Ahsokas I have. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably due. I'm probably due to get one. Um, Kez Major says Rebels is where Ahsoka shines. Vader, Ahsoka Temple fight beyond epic. Yeah, that's a good fight. I agree. I agree. I like that one a lot. That's a good episode of Rebels. Um, that wasn't my favorite show, but that would be in my top top five favorite episodes of Rebels, um, for sure. Um, 
And uh, yes, Danny Lee says all free shipping and no tax sites are going to sell out first. Agreed. Yeah, uh, I think you pay taxes at Sideshow, uh, but uh, you do. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she's definitely a uh, firm squat, but leaning towards a buy for me. Uh, AV Club, I know you're not a hot toys guy, but what do you think? No, I mean it's it, it, it's a squat for me, but yeah, it's a it's a beautiful figure. You know, um, I, I think they uh, uh, missed the mark a little bit though by not uh, having this come out like during the finale of Clone Wars. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, all the different uh, accessories you're showing, like you know, especially at the end with the uh, her uh, with the graves of the the clone troopers. You know, that's a uh, that that seems like a real real bargain for two hundred fifty dollars, and how how detailed it is. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was uh, if I was a huge Clone Wars fan, I would buy that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if she comes with those graves. I, I think we saw her accessories, uh, but uh, yeah, it's pretty damn awesome. Two hundred fifty is not. It's not cheap, but it's not on the higher end for a Hot Toys figure. Yeah. yeah of course, I'm sure her uh, her lightsabers are going to be really irritating to light up. I'm sure they'll be tiny. Uh, LR I'm sure they will be. LR 44 <laughs> batteries will be basically worthless in that sense. I bitch about that all the time. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, so she's a firm squat for me. But, yeah, she, she was definitely the star by squatter pass tonight, so we thought we'd just knock her out first. And I'm actually going to close off this. I hope I don't jack anything up, but I'm actually going to close this, uh, this window and um, – and we're going to move on to our next buy squatter pass. So I, hopefully I lessen my bandwidth here so we stop having uh, issues here on my end anyway. So let's go to our next buy squatter pass tonight. And uh, this one is also a uh, – this one is also – oh, awesome. It's working better now. This one is also a uh, Hot Toys Clone Wars series figure. And this is the 501st Battalion Clone Trooper Deluxe. Six scale figure by Hot Toys. And it's got that uh, Ahsoka Tano tribute – uh helmet on as it's kind of you guys can see the 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 uh the the helmet and it was you guys remember from the uh, series they 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 put out their helmets to honor ahsoka sort of in uh her uh her, her skin complexion her skin markings a little bit i guess i think that's what it was uh but anyway very very cool looking figure especially if you're a fan of clones and a lot of people love clones comes with a uh, back a back jet pack as you guys can see uh standard issue clone trooper uh blaster rifle the longer uh, blaster, uh, the uh, longer blaster rifle, as well, um, and looks really freaking awesome. Oh, and hey, look at this, guys! It comes with a Phase One clone trooper helmet as well. well holy balls! You just like this. Wow. The, the hits just keep rolling here. Look at that. And there are <laughs> versions of this. So this is the deluxe. You're getting multiple head portraits here, which is absolutely fantastic. Oh shit! He comes with a bazooka. That <laughs> oh, that's there it. There you go. Yeah, take my money. <laughs> Damn it. there it is again i, I want to get to the accessories uh page just to kind of check it out see there you there you there it is again with the type uh the phase one clone trooper which i kind of am partial to that i, I love that look a lot yeah. um, it sort of has that that uh clone trooper camino in hybrid look right really kind of dig from episode two attack of the clones and the early seasons of the clone wars uh there is that type two i think it's type two clone wars uh, uh clone trooper armor from episode three um, and the later seasons of the Clone Wars, of course. Oh, shit, he comes with a Gatling gun, too. A Gatling gun. <laughs> That's oh, cool. yeah, man. This thing, you, could buy, cool. you could buy multiples of this figure. You could buy, like, five of these easily. You could. So, yeah. So, so he comes with, yeah, he comes with um, he comes with all those helmets. And, shoot, I, I screwed up. I wanted to look at that again. I'm sorry, guys. i having some problems with my uh, control tonight. Um, he comes with all those helmets. Let me get back to that page. Hurry, go. There it is. So he comes with all those helmets, um, all the blaster rifles, two thermal detonators, multiple uh, hand accessories, a jet pack. Holy shit, that's a lot. What do you guys think, man? Buy squad or pass? Uh, let's go to Trav first. Uh, holy balls, man. That's my <laughs> new favorite saying from you, Ryan. Um, I love it, buddy. <laughs> dude the accessories on this it's kind of like you know you had me at bazooka with this um but but for me it it's a pass for me just because um i kind of like what you said earlier i love the clone wars but i don't know if i'm going to get a clone war trooper like you know someone a, a main figure like ahsoka right who that's the franchise kind of new hero um that tits me over the edge um even though it comes with all the helmets all the guns uh, God, it's close, but I think it's a pass for me, man. But would obviously love to have it, but at some point you gotta you gotta stop the madness somewhere. So yeah, but really, uh, this trap before I let you go. Yeah, before I let you off the hook totally. 
because I believe in companion pieces. And I, I, you know, if you're going to get the Ahsoka, not that I'm trying to like pressure you or anything. Oh, I see. Where, I see where you're going with this. You need a companion piece for her because she's, you know, you really need another Clone Wars era character. And uh, what better thing than this, especially with that Ahsoka, Ahsoka um, um, paint apps on the on the one type two uh, uh, phase two clone trooper armor. Right. Damn, that's a good point, right? Because like, if you're making a detoff or something else, right, you need the you need the companion pieces to all. Good I always need a companion piece, and Sideshow knows this. That's why they always list companion pieces next to every single item you look at. They're right. not dumb, they're not dumb people over there. But uh, damn yeah. you, knickknack. Damn yeah, I you. Know. <laughs> I know. There's at least <laughs> territory. Holy balls. Yeah. <laughs> Holy balls. <laughs> You know what? So, so put me in the squat category. Put me in the squat category. All right. All right. Let's go to the chat real fast. Uh, General Grievous 2005 says, I bought this one as well. I don't know why I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole again, but I want Rex to, I want Rex to go with the, so, with, with Anakin. So, so, okay. So, so General Grievous talk about companion pieces. Uh, he bought the Anakin. I, I, I imagine he's saying he bought the Anakin Clone Wars uh, figure and he bought a Captain Rex to go with Anakin. And then he also had to buy this clone trooper to go with Ahsoka. So that's well done, man. That is well done. That gets a plastic planet salute. Well done. That is a lot of money spent and a wee salute to Grid in 2005. Uh, it's a pass for bot fast. Uh, following Freddy says, love them troopers. Who doesn't love clone troopers, man? Uh, Stormtroopers, clone troopers. I love them all too. Uh, Kev's Matrix says, Clone Wars Anakin and Ahsoka both on uh, both on, on staps with Obi-Wan. That would be cool. Uh, to have all three of those on a stap. That would be cool. That would be cool. Uh, and General Grievous says, put Rex, Ahsoka, and this in one detail. That would look great, too. That would be a great, like, uh, like trinity, so to speak. And I, I throw around the word trinity maybe a little too much, but that would be a great trinity to have in one detail, would it be to have these three. So uh, really, really damn cool. So anyway, all right. Oh, well, shit. Uh, AV Club, t- tell me how cool you think uh, Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a pass for me. And my, my thoughts are very similar to what you guys are saying. It's just uh, uh, by itself, you know, it seems like it's uh, – you know, how, compared to how beautiful that Ahsoka piece was, you know, this seems a little bit uh, uh, overpriced, in my opinion. But I mean, if you're gonna, if you're, I mean, you buy you buy this piece when you're going all in on a display for Clone Wars, you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, like it's a, it's a, it's definitely a complimentary piece, but you you don't want to buy this by itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we lost, we lost, uh, we lost Irish uh, or uh, um, um, Trav. Hopefully he'll uh, Harry Job. Hopefully he'll be back with us here in a second. We'll just watch the watch. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is a oh there he is. Let's put him back in. We lost you there, Travi. I'm back. Sorry, I uh, hit the wrong no, button. No, it's the night of technical difficulties, man. It's mm-hmm. um yeah. Um we might have to figure out another uh, thing to uh, it might be the dual streaming that's that's jamming us up. We, we might have to work on this. Anyway, um I didn't go yet. This is a uh this is a firm squat for me, leaning on a buy. Really like it. I just love all the accessories. I love all the different things you could do with it. Problem with this is that if I buy one, it's almost like Lay's potato chips. I, I just no one can eat yeah. one. You almost need two. You really do. Um, God, you could buy like four or five, six of these, and, and you could have them all in different configurations. Um, really well played, uh, Hot Toys. Really well played on this one. Uh, I imagine the production run on this is going to be pretty pretty lengthy just, just to accommodate all the army builders that are going to want to buy this piece. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty freaking cool, man. Pretty freaking cool. So anyway, let's move on guys. Let's move on. Uh, let me, uh, let me exit out of this. Hopefully I don't drop out of the stream. Just trying to, just trying to lessen up our, uh, uh, how many, uh, how many stuff, how much stuff I have here. Um, hang on one more second. There we go. Okay. So let's move on to our next piece. And, um, what else do we, what else do we want to do? We want to do, we'll just knock out, we'll knock out the other, uh, the other Clone Wars offering. I think there was one more today. Um, I thought there was, maybe not. Hang on, guys. Sorry, one second. Oh, I don't think that. Okay, so those were the two today. I'm sorry, there wasn't more than one. Oh, uh, let's go to this one now. This is sort of one we talked about. This is a little redundant. I apologize. Uh, we actually talked about this on our on Buy Squatter Pass about a month ago, but it is now up for pre order. It went up for pre order in the last two weeks. Uh, let's talk about this piece right real fast. I know we talked about him already, um, and he's not sharing. Hang on screen you guys seeing him yep. there, oh, he yes. is. there he is all right so we talked about this two weeks ago when it was previewed but we didn't actually get to see the figure itself yet um so let's talk a little bit about this guy here and i just want to look this look at that head sculpt there this is luke skywalker from the empire strikes back in his uh cold weather x-wing or snow speeder gear and um 
this figure has multiple, uh, you know, his figure is multifaceted. You can display him as a, uh, basically as he was when he was on the frozen ice fields of Hoth after his snow speeder had gone down and he was out slaying at ats with his harpoon gun and lightsaber in hand like a true Jedi warrior, uh, like they have him right here. Or you could also display him, uh, as we just saw previously, uh, as he was in the swamps of Dagobah, eagerly searching out the tutelage of Jedi Master Yoda. So really damn cool. There's all the accessories. A shit ton of accessories, guys. You get you get multiple hand sculpts, including gloved hands and bare hands. You get two different, two different kinds of stands. You get an ice field stand and a murky Dagobah swamp stand. You get a couple different head portraits, including a helmeted one, a uh, a, uh, a snow, a cold weather. Um, I don't know what you'd call that. Ear cover. I don't know what you'd call that. I think, I'm sure there's a technical like pilot's term for that that I am totally uh, ignorant of. But you get a harpoon gun. You get a standard issue Rebell uh, Rebel Alliance blaster. You get his lightsaber. You get the lightsaber swinging effect. You get the thermal detonator that he blew up that ad at Walker with. You get a <laughs> shitload of cool shit. This is pretty goddamn awesome. Bye, squad. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, bye, squad. <laughs> pass. Let's go to let's go to AD Club first. Oh, I think this is a total buy. You know, um, as, I mean, uh, you look it, the face sculpt alone looks really good to me, as far as uh, being Luke Skywalker. And uh, two, it was it was two sixty five was the price. Two sixty five, yeah. Yeah, that seems like a really good deal. Uh, you know, compared to what, compared to what we looked at earlier. You know, and it's a, it's Luke Skywalker, and he's yeah, no, that's uh that's a really good looking figure. I, I like it quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 Ab, you remember the rules? When you say buy, we expect to see that in your collection when that comes out in uh, twenty two. Okay, well, it's, it's a squad for me. Okay, right all right. I'm just making sure here. I'm, I'm making sure we're clear on the rules. And, you know. I, I guess what I'm saying is I would I would be shocked if <laughs> I would be shocked if Nick didn't buy this. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Yeah, it doesn't come out till it doesn't look at the date on this. I have now I'm sure like maybe um maybe there's a pandemic uh, 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 rationales to this, uh, but I've never seen a, a, a street date so far out. Um, at least they're being open and upfront about it. I mean, it doesn't doesn't mean that I've, I've seen I've seen figures previewed three years before they ever come out, i.e., Justice League Superman. But at least they're being honest up front about it here. Um, you know, that is 18 months out, uh, April 22 to June of 22. Um, so that's a long ways out. Trav, what are your thoughts, man? You're just getting into Hot Toys. You need a Luke Skywalker. Buy a squad or pass, man. Dude, so you know what scares the hell out of me about that date? Not only for this figure, but the next figure is after that. If they're this backed up, you know, it's like, holy cow, man. I might be dead by the time I start getting some of these, you know? <laughs> I'm like buying gifts for my kids at some point, you know? <laughs> Dude, I've thought long and hard about this piece, man, because, one, um, I, need a, I need a Hot Toy Luke, but the thing I struggle with is I have two premium format statue Lukes, and I got a kick-ass – I got two General Giant ones, one that I really like. So I feel like I have Luke represented really well in my collection, but I don't have a good X-Wing Luke, you know? Uh, you, you know how, like... You don't have a good Hot Toys Luke. I know. Um, and and where I would like to display it, so I saw a display, Nick Knack. You know what I'd love to do? They had the Empire Hot Toys Yoda that came out. Do you have that piece, the Yoda? And, the Empire uh, Hot Toys Yoda, yes, I do. Yeah, and he comes out, he comes with a head sculpt with his eyes closed. And, and I saw him pose with the sideshow X-Wing Luke, right? But it'd be better to do it with the Hot Toys, of course. And he has his hand out like he's, when he's lifting the ship, right? And they had Luke next to him. It looks so badass. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, that makes me want to get it over time. So, oh, what the hell? Put me in the buy category. Yes, Travis buying it. It, yes. it. It's 2022, man. It's like right, the payments on that. Thing. You don't want to notice it. Yeah, that's the thing, man. It's so far out, man. You put a yeah. deposit on today. You know, it's so far. So here's my thing, guys. When we previewed this figure a couple weeks ago, um, I was on the firm. I was in a firm pass category uh, because I do have the sideshow version of this. And it's a fantastic figure. Still is a fantastic figure. Um, upstairs in my detail, I have the sideshow Hoth uh, X-Wing or uh, Snow Speeder Luke Skywalker upstairs. So this is a kind of firm pass for me. But then I saw the pictures. And then I saw the pictures. Yeah, that's and, what I'm talking about. And I fucking love Luke Skywalker, guys. And yeah. the thing is, is, like, I have multiple Jedi Luke Skywalkers. I bought the regular Hot Toys Jedi Luke Skywalker. And I bought the fucking deluxe one, too. 
So I just got to thinking, and then I'm looking at that street date, April of 2022. I mean, you know, holy hell, I could be, I could be, I could be 80 pounds heavier then. Who knows? <laughs> um, that's a long time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I already bought it. I pre-ordered it. My deposit's in. I bought it. Uh, so I am on the buy score. I am in the buy category firmly for this piece. I have purchased Collect them it. all, brother. Yeah, and the thing is, too, is that I while I have him upstairs, I, why I have him upstairs, I, I know it's a little redundancy in my collection. While I have him upstairs in the Hoth form, like you see here that we're looking at right now, I am going to display this one more in the Dagobah format with the ungloved hands, the blaster, um, you know, like he's, you know, kind of next to my old sideshow, uh, uh, Yoda's hut. I think you'll look yeah. great next to that. Just fantastic. Oh, yeah. Talk about kick ass companion pieces. So, yeah. This was a buy for me. So uh yeah, pretty pretty goddamn awesome. So anyway, um yeah, so let's let's move on. Let me uh let me exit out of this one. So Congrats, we kinda, man. Yeah, That's no, sweet. no, I'm very excited to get that one. That one's gonna be pretty damn cool. Let's go to the chat before we go on to our next figure. Uh Danny Lee says, must have for me, missed out on the sideshow version. Yeah, if you missed out on the sideshow version, it's a complete must buy. I, I completely agree, Danny Lee. Uh, I'm with you, Dan Lee. Uh, Follow Freddy wants that best Ben Luke. He's talking about the one that that's that Hot Toys previewed at San Diego Comic Con in 2019. Hopefully, we see that at some point. I have the DX07, which is the original uh, Hot Toys Luke Skywalker. That was actually the first Hot Toy Star Wars uh, figure that Hot Toys ever did. It still holds up pretty nice. Who knows? By the time that that uh, that new uh, best Ben Luke Skywalker actually comes out, who knows? Maybe I'll end up buying that one too. Never say never. Um, General Greta says, I have the sideshow version. I pre-ordered this one as well, but what the hell? Why is it a two-year window? I don't know. I think it has to do with, uh, probably has to do with the uh, Hot Toys' schedule, maybe. I, I think it has to do with some pandemic considerations. You got to think. Um, I, you got to think there's COVID considerations in there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. At least well, they're being- That scares me, man. I, I, I'm serious. That scares me, not only for this figure, but every other figure. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could see a backlog. I really do. Um, we'll just have to see, man. We'll see, but at least they're being honest. I mean, like I said, the justice league Superman, uh, was previewed when justice league came out in 2017 and that son of a bitch just shipped this summer. That's a really rare exception to the rule. I think those DC figures just kept getting put back and put back and put back because of all the, all the Marvel stuff that they were producing for, uh, for, uh, infinity war and Endgame. So I think the justice league figures just kept getting delayed, 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 delayed. Um, just because of Hot Toys production schedules, probably with Marvel and Star Wars. But, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Definitely interesting. Um, uh, let's see here. Kev's, uh, Kev's Matrix says, easy buy for my Dagobah 1.6. Yeah, he's right there with me. Kev's Matrix is right there with me. And he says, that's that's how my Yoda's posed behind uh, me, Trav, LOL. I, I, <laughs> oh, dude, th th that's how I won it, man. When I saw that in someone else's collection, I'm like, I have to go back collect that Yoda for a companion piece, man, because with the eyes closed, like raising it would be sweet. Yeah, that, that's how I have mine too. Yeah, yeah. So it's really damn cool. All right, guys, well, let's move on to our next piece. And uh, this is fun. Let's just, This is a fun piece. Let's do this one really fast. Uh, let me go to the share screen. Hopefully we don't have any too many hangups this time. And let's go to um, – yeah, let's go to this. You guys seeing this? No. Not yet. I don't know what's going on tonight, guys. Sorry. Um, I think the simulcast might be jacking up uh, jacking up my internet stream. And they, uh, StreamYard says it wouldn't do that, but it seems to be doing that. I don't know what's going on here. Um, there it is again. Uh, let's try share screen one more time. Sorry, guys. Hang with me. Hang with me. I'll get it. There it is. Yes. Look at this beautiful figure. This is a pre-order. It's got a dice. Nice. He's a, he you're a pet detective. Look oh, at all these so Alrighty then. Uh. <laughs> Freaking awesome. I love it. Um, I am really tempted by this piece. If you're a child of the 90s, this is kind of got to be a must buy. Um, I was a senior in high school when this movie came out. And uh, really damn good memories of watching this movie in the theaters. Uh, love it, man. I absolutely love it. It's a firm squat. Man, if I come into some money, though, I could order this. This is <laughs> fucking cool. And he's 190 bucks. What do you think of it, A.V.? That's too much. 
<laughs> you know, that's, too much. that's too much, but I love it. I mean, I, I love that they made that they made that piece. That's great. You know, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I, I know, I know. That's just uh you know, that's a it's it's a pass, but I mean that's it's a lot of fun though. I like his it. apartment. That's so cool. He's got his, <laughs> he's got his business card. I know. No, I, 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 hey, hey, man, I love the movie too, man. The movie's great. I'm, I'm disappointed he doesn't seem to come with the, the other pets. but um, Right, and he should come with a little football just for the laces out. Yeah, I'm disappointed. What, what was the name of that actor? I don't know. I don't expect you guys to know it. He's such a, character, a niche Frankel. character actor. No, 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 no. The, the guy oh, who played it. Yeah, no, no, the guy who played. He's such a niche character actor. The guy who played Ace Ventura, landlord, in the movie, and he's like oh. knocking on the door. He's like, I hear when you're away. I hear I hear scratching noises in here. Right, Do you right. have an animal in this apartment? Right. Such a good movie. <laughs> it's yeah. a good movie. It, it was classic. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So yeah, he came out movie. with uh, he came out with that movie, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber within the same year. I mean, that's, yeah, 93, 94 that, was uh, his heyday, man. That was, that was quite a breakdown. It was. it was, dude. It was. I remember watching um, Ace Ventura when Nature Calls in college in the theaters. And I was uh, dating someone at the time and I was watching it with her in the theater. And the scene when he's like stuck in like the, he's like doing some like uh, undercover work and he's inside of that, that rhinoceros like robot or that hippopotamus robot yeah. or whatever. And he's like gets all hot and he like starts like trying to squeeze his head yeah. out of the anus. You know? He's like, right. like, he's like safari going by, and the mom's like, Oh look, the baby, the mother rhinoceros is giving birth. He's all <laughs> I was just like peeing my pants in the theater at that scene. That's <laughs> awesome. Love that guy. Trap by squatter pass on Ace Ventura. <laughs> it's a pass for me, Nick Knack, but uh, it'd be cool. But man, it's a pass for me. For me, even if I'm going camping out, a uh, campy route, I'm going different route. But uh, but dude, it's sweet. I mean, how can you not love Ace Ventura? Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah, no, he's he's freaking That's awesome. Great. He's freaking awesome. So yeah, no, it's a hard squat for me, but he is he is really damn cool. Um, yeah. That's Did you see the John Rambo they came out with, man, for Hot Toys? I didn't. Was it Hot Toys? I thought it was. Maybe a sideshow, but it might be another company. There's there's multiple one six scale companies. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I'll definitely look into it, man. Uh, too bad I don't have it here tonight. I don't have it any. I don't have anything like that on cue. Paul McGrath in the house. What's up, Paul? He says smoking. So yeah, smoking. Uh, Paul McGrath says we need some Earth Girls are easy hot toys, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I love it, man. I love it. All right, man. Well, let's keep going, dude. We've got a few more to get to. Um, so let's go to share screen. Hopefully, uh, this, uh, this will work a little better for us. Um, okay, so this is a statue. And um, let's go to this. Oh, good. It came up this time. Look at this. This is a Batman Deluxe uh, Batcave uh, statue. $1,300 and uh, sorry, $1,369. So nearly $1,400. Uh, this is pretty epic high end i don't do a lot of high end pieces but we love to talk about them nevertheless i love the uncowled batman version and if uncle pat was here with us tonight he could tell us exactly what comic this came from <laughs> and what his opinion on that comic was and whether or not he thought this was a horrid piece of shit or not but pat's not here tonight unfortunately uh oh look he comes with a cow too look at that is he uh yeah uh, carrying some kryptonite there or yeah, something dude and he's got multiple yeah. head portraits. I mean, for fourteen hundred dollars, you fucking ought to. But he's got multiple right. head portraits. Um, it's pretty fucking awesome. Let me just keep scrolling through. I think I think I got it all. But look at the base. Look at all the little. Like, what what are the? Was it stalactites or stalagmites that come up from the bottom of a uh, 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 cave? I don't. I, I. We need a science person. Um, <laughs> I, I. I am not that person. I can't we remember. Do, yeah. <laughs> The stalactites or stalagmites they're coming up. Oh, he's got a batarang thing. Batarang, and he's got the he's got the bat harpoon gun. So much shit. He's got like some like light up green control panel. He's got bats all around okay. him. Okay. Yeah. Um and then I think the the I think it comes with like a a stand to put the head on, the other heads on when you're not using them, maybe. Is that what I'm looking at? Is that what that is? Swap up the head parts and three headstands. Okay. So you can also display the headstands 
while you're uh, while you're not using them, so you're not like just shoving them in the styrofoam in the box. Oh, that's kind of that's 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 pretty unique. Nice. That's neat. That's pretty nice. Um, obviously, I don't do high end collectibles. This is a pass for me, but it's really damn cool. Uh, uh, Trav, what do you think? Dude, I did not want to spend fourteen hundred bucks for Batman trying to squeeze out a big turd. Um, I mean, <laughs> look at his face. His face and all of these are just like to me. He looks like he's yeah. taking a big dump. He yeah. can't quite get out. <laughs> you know, as far as the base, the accessories, I think they killed it. Um, but for me, the face is off, man. So that's a hard pass. And, and here's how I look at this, right? When I compare this to other $1,300 figures, right? There's like, I think it's the Hulkbuster. There's the Hulk, the Ragnarok that's out there, the Rancor. You know, I'd probably put this towards the bottom of that list, you know? Right. So for me, it's a hard pass. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. But again, not enough to buy it. $1,300 for a single piece is just so out of my price range, man. Yeah. Uh, well, so now, yeah. now, granted, don't get me wrong. I, if someone was giving it to me or I could buy it for 100 200 bucks, I'd still be all in, right? But for that face scope at that price range, I'm out. It's a lot of money. What are, you, what are your five oh, It's a pack. Batman, Batman has constipation. <laughs> <laughs> Batman has constipation. That's what it is, right? I'm telling you. Uh, uh, my dumb dumb. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, think you're, I think you're right. Uh, there, Harry Jabba, um, you know, especially when you talk about the uh, Hulk that has the uh, gladiator armor. I mean, that is a yep. that is a beautiful, beautiful piece. This is this is not in the same ballpark. You know, uh, it's 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 fine, but it's that's it's too much. It's a pass. Okay, well, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So no, it's 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 yeah. It's just it's just way too much money. I, I agree. It's just not something I, mean, I. I mean, if it came with a toilet, maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did like ben, that. You're for, talking, man. For the record, I did really like that base. Uh, General Greaves 2005 says, pass, don't collect DC or Marvel. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so, okay, so let's go on to our next piece, guys. We've got, got a few more to get to. Um, and let's stay in the DC re uh, realm. This is a um, – I screwed up because I, I – I, uh, this is a uh, – this is a uh, like a one-tenth scale statue from Iron Studios, very similar to the Iron Man piece that you picked up, A.V., yeah. Um, and this is uh, this is of course uh, Wonder Woman and Young Diana. It's um, um, I don't know if it's something from the new movies. I'm really not familiar with it too much. It looks very uh, DCEU to me, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, they, they do have a I, I think it's there. from the movie because in the movie they had her as a child and yeah. as an adult. So I think they just combined it. And yeah, the, but the, it's, the trailer for the new one too shows her as a as a child too. This is Wonder Woman eighty four. Okay. Okay, and it says it down below. There's you can see a little, uh, a little logo down below. So this is from Wonder Woman '84, which of course we should have probably seen by now, but of course because of the state of the world, um, we haven't. There's a there's a size comparison for you guys there. Um, it's not a big piece. Um, it's fairly small, but it's pretty. It's really really pretty, and uh, it, it looks really fantastic. Uh, trying to see if they really capture Gal Gadot. I don't know. I can't really get a good look at it. Um, I'm not sure. But it looks nice. It's two hundred and five dollars. Um, it's a small statue coming out next year, uh, next summer. Looks like in uh, summer of twenty twenty one. It's a pass for me, but I like it. It's cool. Uh, what are your thoughts, Av? Yeah, it's a pass. I mean, uh, maybe maybe after I see the movie, I'll have different thoughts about it. But you know, like when I bought the uh, Iron Man one, it was an iconic moment. You know, and this is just uh, you know, this is just uh, young and old, and I I, re I really don't think this is referencing anything uh, that we've seen yet. You know, so um, I, I think that that would play into my decision for this. And I, it, it's a pass. OK, that's fair. How about you, Travi? I'm sure it's a pass. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, it, it's a pass. But, you know, I'm partial to the statues. But here I think it's going against you um, because I'd rather have these two figures separate where you can move them around um, and kind of display, you know, the Wonder Woman more front and the kid more back yeah. and have some display options there. So uh, it's a pass for me. But that's it, a good it, point. Yeah, it, you got to kind of. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're stuck with how you have two figures, uh, you know, uh, displayed. So I don't like that. Yeah, following Freddie says, skip the Wonder Woman child, give me the Wonder Woman. I, I, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can totally see that. No, so, I, think yeah. I think that's a good point, though, uh, Harry Jabba. It's just like when you did, you'd be constantly fidgeting with it as far as like how you would display it. Yeah. And for one piece, I like it. I love the statues. You can get flowing, stuff like that. But you got this child kind of front and center. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. No, it's, it's cool. It's cool. But yeah, I, I, I agree with you guys both. 
All right, guys. Well, let's keep going. We got a, we got a few more things to get to. Um, let me see if I can do the share screen tonight. And uh, let's see here. Oh, this is interesting. Let's do this one. Let's go back to Star Wars real fast. And let's go to Big Bad Toy Store. And it didn't come up. Hang on one second. There it is. There it is. <laughs> this is the Star Wars Return of the Jedi, the uh, Return of the Jedi Job of the Hutt Concept Limited Edition Maquette Replica. Mm. So this is based off of, uh, I believe it's probably a production maquette. I'll be darned. Based off a of production maquette from the making of Return of the Jedi. Um, fans were first introduced to the, this maquette in behind the scenes photos and television specials. This early concept depicts the mighty crime lord on his DS, hands clasped and surrounded by vases, vases and stones. After examining the original maquette among the artifacts from the production of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, this replica sculpture was painstakingly digitally recreated from extensive photograph and measurements. This is a one-one recreation of Phil Tippett, who is a great, it's a great uh, 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 stop-motion um, uh, animator. He, you know, he famously did, worked on the Ad At Walkers and many, many things in Star Wars. We love original concept sculpture. Um, it's five by nine by five inches, so it's not real big, um, and it's cast in heavy resin, so it's not like it's pretty big. It's going to be it's not big necessarily, but it's going to be heavy. And there you guys can see it with uh, in a sort of get a sense of scale there. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's three hundred and fifty dollars. Trav, you're a big Java guy. What are your thoughts on this? I am a big Java guy, but you know, I don't like it. I mean, he, I would love it if this was an original piece that came out, right? And they later changed it, and it was more rare. But something sits very wrong with me for spending three hundred fifty bucks right, to reproduce something that was pre-production that never went to production. You know, it's kind of like you're replicating a prop replica that was never used. Um, and oh, so it's for- a conceptual design is what it is. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, I'm sorry. So you're representing a, a conceptual design that was never used. Whereas if they had the conceptual design and even made a couple, that would be dynamite um, to have. Um, so for me, it's a pass, um, especially given probably the size of it, even though, you know, at least they got the weight right. I'm a big fan of quality items, and I think weight's one of the main reasons how you go there. Um, yeah. But for me, for me, it's a pass. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, you know, like I said, it's a conceptual design. It's very much like if you're in the in the same uh, in the, you're in the same realm of like collecting Ralph McQuarrie items. You know, Ralph McQuarrie reproductions and things like that. Um, I have a couple of actual Hasbro. Hasbro ran a line of. Ralph McQuarrie figures for a while, the Stormtrooper, you know, with the lightsaber and the shield and the, the Darth Vader, Ralph McQuarrie concept uh, figure. So it's very much in that, that ilk. Um, to me, it's a pass. It's cool. It's very cool. It has historical reverence, um, but yeah, it's a pass. It's, it's a pass. What do you think, A.B.? I think it's the uh, end result of a uh, Batman's tummy problems. Looks like a, looks like a, <laughs> This looks like a piece of shit. <laughs> no, man, I just, you know, I, I, I get the whole original concept art and stuff like that. I think it's uh, it's overpriced. And I, I'd like to, I, I know there were other designs for uh, Job of the Hut too, you know, as far as like what he was supposed to look like, you know, and I think I would be much more open to purchasing it if it had set more of those, if it had more of them uh, all, all together. I think it would make more sense if you had all of the co original concept uh artwork for job of the hut yeah it's it's cool it's cool it's just not my it's not really my thing uh let's see here paul mcgrath says job of the turd um this is sort job of, of the turd sort of thing, sort of thing. <laughs> no i just i don't I, yeah it, it, it's just uh, it's really you know it doesn't doesn't look good you know yeah yeah, yeah. falling yeah. right i left turds that look better than that concept java so again we're still in the shit realm um, Kev's Matrix says this looks like Bantha Poo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a companion piece to the Batman one. So. <laughs> <laughs> and following Freddy uh, follows up by saying, uh, "But I'll take it for free." So uh, so yeah. So there we go. Uh, no one wants that. That's fine. That's fine. Anyway, let's move on. I, I, I thought it had some value just out of the... No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... I didn't mean no, to... no, 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 no. Opinions are great. Everyone feels... Uh, I'm, I'm in the minority. Not that I'd buy it. I'm not even a squad. It's a pass. Yeah. But, it, but yeah, I, I, I just... The historical reverence of what it represents 
has meaning to me because uh, it was obviously an early pass at what they thought Job of the Hut would look like on screen. That's the only reason. Yeah. But I get it. I get it. I get it. You know. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's look at a couple more pieces here. And uh, let's see here. Oh, what do we have left? Uh, let's get to this one. Uh, hang on one second. Are you guys seeing it? Is it no. there? Okay. I just have to like give it a second to kind of do its thing. This is from Big Bad Toys. Or this is the Master Builder MB06C Power Baser. Uh, this is a third-party reissue uh, from Fans Toys. This is a basically this is Power Master Optimus Prime. Uh, I wish we had Uncle Pat with us tonight because he's uh, he's our big Transformer guy, as am I. But but Uncle Pat's a little more into it right now than I am. Um, this or this looks pretty damn awesome. Um, and it has light up features, right? Dude. I'm not sure. Uh, adjustable. It says uh, made of ABS metal alloy. Tra uh, trailer transformers in a battle station. Red eye adjustable bumper. Articulate hands. Chrome plated thighs on the core, and the and the larger robots. So. I'm not sure if it has lineup features or not, but it looks really damn awesome as we're just kind of scrolling along, looking at it. Again, this is a uh, this is a third party figure. It's two hundred and nine dollars, um, but I gotta tell you guys, this is this is pretty damn awesome. Um, I love it a lot, and I'll just come out and say I bought it. Oh, so, cool! <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I bought this piece already because I really. <laughs> Love the concept of Power Master Optimus Prime. Uh, we've yep. talked about this in other shows uh, where, you know, with Optimus Prime dies, he's going to come back. He's got to come back bigger and badder and better than ever. And that's why I love the idea of Power Master Optimus Prime. And I, I love the idea of having a masterpiece Power Master uh, Optimus figure. And this $209 price is right. Uh, it just looks really fucking cool. Um, you know, not not bad for a guy who's on Team Rodimus, say they're AV. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a uh, hey, baby steps, man. That's a uh, that's nice. That's a uh, uh, that's a pretty sweet piece. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Uh, what are your thoughts of it, Av? I, I like it a lot. Um, it's a it, it's a squat for me uh, personally, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it looks pretty badass. This is uh, Optimus getting ready to take on about fifty Decepticons. That's what that that's what that looks like to me. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, he's armed to the teeth, man. He's power master Optimus yeah, Prime. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Travi? It's like mashed potatoes and gravy, Nick Knack. How can you not love it, man? Yeah. Um, I tell you what, if you had one piece in your Transformers collection, this would be it. Um, I think it's that damn cool. Um, and so if I was going to just start and have one, it'd probably for me be both a, a, a Megatron and Optimus. And, and uh, why not this Optimus, man? This is about as badass as it gets. Oh, um, really, so it's a swap for me, you know, but shit, you don't even have to like, like for, this would be perfect for a guy like me. That's not really collecting transformers. But yeah. If I just wanted it represented by one or two pieces, damn, this is a piece to get, man. Yeah. yeah this that's, is a damn, that's damn exactly good. right. This is a damn good figure, dude. This is a damn, if, good if I was, if I was going to get transformers, this would be the one that that's right. Yeah. Right. Especially if you're just a one or two piece collector. It's like, damn, this is yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Damn good piece. Uh, Chicken Fried Steak is in the house. What's up, brother? Good to have you here tonight, man. Um, yeah, Kev's Major says, McCoury Starkiller. Love that design. He's talking back to the, we were talking about uh, conceptual pieces for Star Wars for that job of the hut. Um, let's see here. Yeah, uh, uh, Chicken Fried Steak says, Pessimist Prime, so he's not down, but that's okay. That's okay. Kev's Matrix says, very tempted to say for that Bumblebee helmet, pricey life-size helmet, saw the other day, 300 creds. I, I don't know which one he's talking about, but I'll, I'll definitely look into it. Um, and Paul McGrath says, I'm all over that. I think, I think he's talking about Power Master Optimus Prime. So, uh, yeah, no, it's really Great. fucking cool, man. It's really it's a good fucking, one, Paul. It's a really fucking cool looking figure. Um, yeah, like I said, I bought it. It is in my pre order. It is in my bag of loot. It's supposed to come out next spring. So, you know, you got to kind of like, uh, it's one of those things I got to budget for a little bit, knowing full well what's going on. But, uh, yeah, no, this is, this is definitely one that I, I picked up. So, I am pretty goddamn awesome. I'm pretty goddamn stoked to get this one. So uh, yeah, that is that is really cool. Um, awesome. So let's move on. In that same ilk, though, real fast, let's do one uh, one more from Big Bad Toy Store. One more Transformer, and hopefully it's coming up. That is the commemorative issue of Power Master Optimus Prime with Apex armor. 
So this is a reissue of the original G1 toy with some added accessories, namely that that back trailer. So it, it, oh, it I cool. think it's more roughly based off of uh, yeah. I wish Uncle Pat was here to talk to us because he would know maybe a little better than I do. But this is basically more of a I think it's basically more of more of a Japanese uh, version of that figure that came out. And this course figure came out in I want to say 88, 89, somewhere in there. I remember you had him, didn't you, uh, AV? This one. Did you have Power Master Optimus Prime? No, I, I did not. I did not. I did not have this one. I swear I thought you did. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you what you had or hadn't, but uh, yeah, I swear I thought you did. Yeah, no, this is um, I because I really am trying to basically um, beef up my original G1 collection, and I showed off uh, my G1 Transformers in an earlier video down here in the archive slash arcade room of the Plastic Planet, and uh, and uh, this one is pretty goddamn awesome. Um, I like it a lot. Let's see if we can show. Uh, is there any more pictures of it? I don't think there is. Um, yeah, they basically just show you the whole thing. But it's one hundred seventy nine dollars. Um, it's from the Transformer series, featuring Power Master Officer Prime as an articulated figure. It includes robot mode, lengthened trailer vehicle mode, attack mode, and attack mode two. It includes Apex armor and two blaster weapons. Can be combined with Apex bomber to create Power Master Optimus Prime. So anyway, this is a uh, this is a full on squat for me. It's pretty damn cool, uh, and I do want to get a Power Master Optimus Prime in my collection for a G1 Power Master Optimus Prime, not a masterpiece. So I, this is a this is a uh, this is a, uh, a squat for me. I think it's available now. So if I wanted to order it, I could just order it now. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, uh, Trav, what do you think? Uh, I like it, ma'am. I like the other one better, though. I like the masterpiece yeah. better. Uh, so yeah. for me, it's a pass. Um, but hey, man, still a damn cool figure. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Gaby? I this is a. I mean, I I I really don't like it. I think this, I think this is a hard pass. Okay. Um, I just uh, I really like the other figure a lot more. I think it's just like. You know, for you have to go all the way on the other figure if you're going to buy an Optimus figure. You know, I just feel like, I feel like when he's in robot mode, it's like you, it's hard to it's almost hard to recognize that that's Optimus Prime. You know, I think that's a, that's just a real problem for me when I look at this. Yeah, you know? Well, you know, this is a reissue of the original toy though, so you have to take that into consideration. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I know. I just when I look at it, it's like I, I feel like I have to be told it's Optimus Prime. You know, the other one is just like bam, that's Optimus Prime. Yeah. And this one, this one's just uh, it doesn't. No, nah, it's it's a pass. It's a pass for me. All right, man. Well, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, let's keep going, man. We got a couple more to get to, and um, I think just a couple more. And uh, let's go into uh, <laughs> let's look at some Etsy shit. This is, this is <laughs> yeah. Let's look at some Etsy shit. While we were talking about Transformers, and uh, hopefully you're seeing this now. Nope, not yet. Hang on. Share screen one more time. Uh, there it is. Following, following Freddie saying there's a new Transformer video game on the horizon for the PlayStation and the Xbox. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. That'd be cool. I love playing War for Cybertron back in the day on the Xbox 360. Yeah, that was that a great was, game. Was pretty fucking awesome. So this is an Etsy. This was uh this was actually your suggestion to take a look at today tonight, AV. Yeah. Uh, this is a guy. A guy made this, and uh, 150 dollars. This is of course the Ark. From Generation One Transformers, as we all remember from that infamous pilot episode, Ro uh, Robots in Disguise, three-part pilot episode. Of course, this is the spacecraft that crashes into the volcano and is seen throughout the first two seasons of the Transformers. So let's take a look at it. Um, this is obviously something that someone has handcrafted, but has somehow managed to mass produce on Etsy. Like I said, it's one hundred fifty dollars. You only got two left, so if you want one, you better get on it. <laughs> uh, look at the backside, though. It kind of really does. Uh, that looks pretty cool. The engine intakes. You can almost picture this craft jammed into the backside of a volcano. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I think it's. I think it's pretty cool for the price. It's pretty Dude, tight. I like what they did here. See, yeah, that, guys, I like that display there. That's, that's yeah. Just cool. to give you guys a sense of scale, how big it is. It's not giant, but you guys can see it in a detail there uh, with some G1 yeah. transformers um, on a stand. So pretty cool. I mean, really damn cool. It's a pass for me, but it's it's neat. Yeah, um, it's definitely a unique piece. And if you had this in your collection, it would definitely be a, a conversation piece for sure. Uh, what are your thoughts, Trap? Dude, that that's cool. And kudos to this person, man, to go out and freaking make a living doing this. Are you kidding me? Right. Um, I mean, what a hell of an artist. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, 
yeah, I'm just not collecting it, so it's the past. But dude, I, if I was collecting it, I would think long and hard about this, man. Pretty neat. It's pretty neat. What do you think, Av? I mean, it, it's a pass for me. I, I really wanted to hear what you you had to you guys had to say on it uh, on this. Um, but you know, from my perspective, like the detail and everything like that, it seems like it's. If you're really into Transformers, though, I think this is a bargain as far as the price. You know, as far as like you know, when you compare it to the uh, amount of money that's being spent on the other th uh, other items. But uh, I think it's, you know, just a cool backdrop to have, you know, in any display case. Yeah. Uh, would, but I think that it would be, you know, just a nice addition. Yeah, I like the stand, too, because the stand's like an asteroid. Of course, if you watch that episode, they, they fly through an asteroid field. So uh, really cool. And then a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of nods there to the original uh, episode there of, uh, of Transformers, More Than Meets the Eye, Part 1. So uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Again, it's a pass for me. Um, I don't know, man. Something about buying something off Etsy. I bought some things off Etsy for my wife for Christmas, and it's it's um, it's hit and miss. It's really hit and miss. So um, you know, but it's cool. It's definitely cool. I don't know. It's just it was a fun piece. So yeah. So thanks for bringing that one up. Um, and let's go to another Etsy piece because we're just talking Etsy for just a few more. Um, let's see if I can do this right. Uh, let's. Oh, this is a good one. And I'll give it a second to come up. You guys seeing it yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. That didn't come up. Hang on. One more time. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with the share screen tonight, man. Um, there we go. Seeing it? All right. All right. Cool. So this is some wall art. This is a Transformers Autobot logo emblem. It's made of metal. It's 35 bucks. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, let's see if I can get, you can get it in different colors, multicolors. Wow. Yeah, well, that's pretty yeah, fucking awesome. The black, 30, the black's nice. Thirty-four bucks, man. That? Um, it is twelve. Uh, it's made of twelve gauge sheet steel, so it's made of you know metal. Um, I'm having, I don't know where I. Uh, I don't want to click on anything too much. I don't want to take us off the page. Yeah, but you can select the size. So twelve inches is thirty-four dollars. Sixteen inches is forty-five. So it comes in two different sizes. The green's a little different. I like that's cool. That, that is, is cool. cool. The green, that's pretty cool. I do like the I like the red. Probably the, the red or the matte black probably are my favorites. Although yeah. the metallic blue is pretty awesome because it's got that sort of a 80s animation space look to it. You know what it I mean? It does. I think I like the metallic blue, bud. Yeah, that's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, so this is a squat for me. Shit, I could get this. This would look good down here in the archive room. Um, I like it, man. What, what are your thoughts, uh, Trav? Dude, I freaking love this piece, man. Especially the fact that it's made out of metal. Are you kidding me? We're getting back to that quality conversation. You know what this would be perfect for, Nick Knack? The man cave. You know, something like yeah. this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you man. Know? You can put it'd be up. perfect for the man cave, man. Hell, put me down as a buy, dude. I freaking love it, man. Oh, yep. dude. All right, man. Trav's a buy. Yeah, you can put this in a fucking garage and look manly. Yeah, exactly, dude. It's that's sweet. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts, dude? I'm going to buy that. Oh, no, nice, dude. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy, like, like you just said, I'm going to put it in my garage. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 No, that's uh, after looking at some of those different colors, but I, I do like the red one. The red one just pops, you know, yeah. so uh, I'm going to I'm going to put that in right when you right when I put my car in. That's the first thing you see where I, you know, my uh, there, I have some cabinets there. I'm going to put it on the cabinet, you know, like just like over my parking spot in the garage. And, and you know what it speaks to, man? It speaks to how cool it is to get something of pretty good quality for a reasonable price, right? Yeah, it's amazing. No, like we're just starving for stuff like that. No. You know, we all love the high end stuff for sure, but you're kind of limited. Like you see something yeah. halfway cool that's metal for a decent yeah. price, like oh hell yeah, yeah, thirty five yeah, bucks. That's like, a, that's like a, a pizza, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Order order a pizza. That's all it is. That's that's. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's taxes and shipping on that too, but still, it's nice. No, you're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. No, that's it's, happening. It's damn cool. Well, awesome, dude. We got to we got to buy tonight out of AVs. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> that is awesome. Not, not that I'm like trying to like make you have to be a cheapskate or something. No, 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 man. But uh, I mean, I just uh, I, I, I've I've looked at some of these things on Etsy, and it's like, yeah, let's talk about that one. You know, so. You no, know, that is that is pretty fucking awesome, dude. That is uh that is pretty fucking awesome. So okay, so let's we just got I think we just got two three more to get to. And so let's do this one. We got one more uh, Etsy item. And uh, this is pretty awesome, guys. I think you guys will like this. Um, hopefully you guys are seeing this. I don't know why it doesn't like, okay, hang on. I don't know why it takes twice for me to get this to come up. All right, hang on. 
<laughs> All right, I can tell you guys have seen it now. Right. I, have so many, I have so many mixed feelings right now. I'm not saying to buy for you. The Boba Fett bikini. But let me just ask, would this be a squi buy, squatter pass for your missus? Um, let's say, okay, so let's say you're going on a nice Caribbean vacation. And, <laughs> and you know, you're not going to see anyone from the office. You're not going to see anyone from work. You won't do anything on social media. Would this be some? Oh, there's a calendar. Sorry, there's a, there's a size chart. Uh, would this be something that you would buy for your lovely wife? I'll go first. My wife would never fucking wear this, although in my dream she would. Yeah. Uh, so it's a pass. How about you, Av? Oh, that's a, that's a pass. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the conversation of trying to bring this up. I mean, she wouldn't know. Why she wouldn't know who Bubba Fett was, and then she'd be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here, you're just gonna sleep on your sleep your ass on the couch tonight, bud. <laughs> Dude, that's fantastic. Nah, that's a, it's a pass. It's a pass. Okay, okay, okay. I want you, Travi. Again, but it's again, fun. I like I'm it. Not asking for us. I'm not asking. Would you wear this? I'm just saying. You know, would you would you would you like to see? Okay, would you like to see your missus in it? Because I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, dude. Dude, yeah. this is a squat for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna beg, plead, and borrow, man. Maybe for my birthday or something, you know. So put me down as a squat, man. It'd be nothing would be cooler. He's no good to me, dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and does it come with a gun, even, yeah, man? That'd be I don't sweet. Think, I don't think so. I, I think that mask is actually a Hasbro mask that the model is wearing, and that's a and they're kind of thrown off there. That's a Jango Fett gun. Um, it but, is, yeah. But uh, nevertheless, um, it's a very attractive model. Uh, but nevertheless, there it is. Uh, so I thought that would be kind of fun uh, to, to round out Etsy tonight. But uh, still, kudos good. to you for finding that, man. That's oh, dude, I dig, oh, wow. man. I dig. I dig, man. I dig for the good stuff here, man. Uh, let's here. Let's go to the chat. Following for uh, Danny Lee says, "Wowza!" I agree, man. I agree. That's kind of that's kind of neat. Uh, General Grievous two thousand five says, uh, two for one." Uh, Kev's, uh, Kev's Matrix says, that's a high bounty. <laughs> uh, General Grievous 2005 says, I surrender. Should I assume the position? I knew this would just go in the wrong direction. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, I, just, I just set it up, and they're knocking it down. Uh, and Kev's Matrix says, try to get try to get into that Sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a uh, shot for every one of these, man. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to set it up there, man. I knew we were going to set it up. All right, man. So we got two more items to get to. I know this has been an extended by Squatter Pass, uh, but that's okay. Um, let's let's look at this next item. This is actually on Amazon. Hopefully it comes up. I'll just give it a second. Are you guys seeing it yet? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Now it takes twice. It's weird. Okay, hang on. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now it's up. Okay, so this is from God of War. This is a great video game. I've never personally played it, but God, it looks cool. Um, I will, I will play that. Um, and this is a. Uh, let me see if I can kind of scroll in on it a little bit. Uh, Amazon doesn't have the the product uh, the product information like other websites do per se. But I don't even know. This is a statue, I believe. That's Kratos, uh, that's Kratos and his son Atreus. This there we go. The, this is from and, the last God of War game, and uh, I sent this. I sent this one to you. you and, I've been, uh, I, I, you know, when a, when a game, when a game really, you know, when I really love a game, like when it really hits me emotionally, you know, I, I, I do give serious consideration to buying something like this, you know. So this, this God of War is definitely one of those games. This is probably one of the best games I've played over the fi past five years. It's wow. really phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is a squat for you then? Uh, it's a little too much for me. Okay. But uh, I, I'd say if it was if it was closer uh, to like 125 or something like that, yeah, I'd do it. Uh, but it's a 200 is a little too much, you know. I'm not in love with the figure, but I love the game so much, you know. So I I, I do keep it. I do uh, go and look for other figures, you know, that may be coming out for this particularly. But I I haven't see, seen anything that's really grabbed my attention. This is probably the best one I've seen. But I just. Uh, uh, 200 is a little little too much for that, I think. But uh, I'm 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 I got my eye open for it. I'm definitely open to buying a collectible for God of War. Oh, nice man. How about you, Travi? 
Man, you know, I got I just got to pass it. I'd hate to get into this game and have to start killing AD all the time in it, you know, and ruining his favorite game. So, <laughs> so it's a pass for me, man. I'd hate to get involved and have to do that to him. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's a pass for me. I don't really, I, I've never played this game. It looks really damn cool. Uh, and maybe we'll run it. Maybe we'll talk a little more about it here in a second. But uh, it's a pass for me. This is really cool. Um, but let me just let me just ask Av something. So you brought up you brought actually brought that statue to my attention, and uh, I kind of thought back to a scene from one of my favorite movies, The Shawshank Redemption. You know the scene where um, where. Uh, 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 Red's in the Red's in the in the in the in, and at the end of the film, Red's in that that that, that tree grove, uh, and um, yeah. his good buddy. What's what what the hell is uh, his the uh, Andy, Andy Dufresne. Dufresne. Anthony Andy Dufresne. Dufresne. Andy Dufresne wrote the, you know he's in the tree grove and he digs up the freaking uh, cigar box and he's and he's reading the letter from Andy Dufresne and he, yeah. and, and you hear it and you hear it in Andy Dufresne's voice and he's all like, "I'm glad so you come." Wonder what the day who? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad you've come this far, Red. Would you like to come a little farther? <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm, I'm Morgan Freeman. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I got to go all the way to the collectibles. Yeah, well, it's just, it's just, you, you, you talked about that one piece we just showed, and this is your favorite game of all time. So I'm just asking, you've come this far, and I know, I know. you didn't commit to buy it, so maybe you haven't. But you've come this far. Do you think you'll come a little farther? So let's look at our last piece tonight. <laughs> Let me just pull it up. Oh fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> no, that thing is badass though. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So that's so this, awesome. This is this is going to Mexico to live with Andy Dufresne. Oh my god, god dude! Yeah, yeah. No, uh, hey, yeah. That's you, that's you, the. You're gonna have to sell a lot of banana peppers in Mexico, oh, man. Oh, there he is. He's got the blades of chaos. <laughs> Yeah, look at that! Look at this! Look at the statue, dude! Look at this that's statue. The, that's the, I mean, oh, everything about the game, man. He's, that's the Leviathan axe, and he throws it, and it's like Thor's hammer. It comes back to him, and like the controller vibrates when it gets back to you. It's just like, delete, delete, so great, man! <laughs> oh, look at this piece, dude! I mean, this is incredible. Um, yeah, no, that's the. Uh, there's like, that's well there's, done. There's, no, that's that's what I'm talking about. But close ups on this thing, dude. It's like he's in your face, dude. Look, you can see the little like gray gray strands in his beard and shit. Yeah, no, it, that's that's fantastic. That's very oh very this accurate, is, very detailed. This is a piece of art, dude. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Listen, uh, yeah, that's so, so, so for the money. You're saying it's better than Constipated Batman, is what you're saying? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's definitely better than Constipated Batman. Take it out, AV, dude. He's got his mouth closed, and then buy me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the game is so freaking satisfied. Ed <laughs> Scott, um, pet portraits. There's the there's the main page. There you see everything. Oh my God! I mean, you dude. I, again, I, I haven't played this game, although I really need to. No man, uh, and listen. I, I I played this game, and for like a month after I finished it, I was, I, you know, he he calls uh, his, his son is Atreus, but he just like throughout the game, he he probably says it like two hundred times. He just calls him boy to me, <laughs> <laughs> like Atreus to me, boy. You're not ready, you know. So I. I, I just completely did that to my son for like 30 days afterwards, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Like I'm to, driving him to school. I'm like, boy, to me. <laughs> it was, no, it's uh, very near and dear, dear to my heart. Listen, if that thing ever goes on sale, let me know. <laughs> it won't go on sale, man. It won't go on sale. Hey, so, so, so just curious, at what price point are you a buyer, man? Yeah, what would it take for you to buy this? I don't know, man. That's I, $9.99? No, I can't do that, man. I can't do that, but I mean, man, it's 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 that would look good. Yeah, Come on, I, your wife doesn't watch eight ninety nine. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Could you imagine that on your? Could you imagine that on your bar there? Of course, you you see you see AV. He's got he's got that brick background behind him, and that's that's straight up valid brick background. I've been there. He's got this awesome bar set up behind him. Could you imagine that on your bar, man? Yeah, no, no. I, I like it in my bar. I like it in my my man cave. Uh, just uh, where you know where where I game and stuff like that. So, 
No, that's that's fantastic. You know, and I'm not seriously trying to talk you into spending over a thousand. I, I know, no, I know. I, I am. I'm, I'm seriously know, trying know, to talk know, you into it. Well, that's you know, that's that's why we're here. But you know, I would say, <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah, not, if, it, if it was nine hundred, I would give very serious. Nine hundred, you'd be tempted if it was four hundred cheaper. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Five hundred. Awesome. Yeah, five hundred. Yeah. What yeah. are your thoughts on it, uh, Trav? Dude, I love it, man. That's a sweet piece. I don't play that. I, now, I I, I kind of consider myself, I have a gaming problem. Once I get going, I can get addicted, so I better not start. Um, but, dude, it's a it's dynamite a, a, piece. A, a, I mean, you should play it. That? You should play it. It's it's It has it has a, you know, it has a start, middle, and end. You know, there's no, like, expansion packs or anything like that. You're not going to be playing it online forever. You know, oh, okay. But, but it's a very, very full meal, you know. And so it's, uh, it's very satisfying. Yes. Maybe in that case, because I need a way to cut bait, man. Because my problem is, I get into all these games and I just can't cut loose, and then my marriage goes bad, and it, all <laughs> kinds of problems happen. Um, <laughs> but it's a pass for me, dude. But dude, if you're into the game, I mean, it's a they, they did the piece extremely well. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Again, it's it's a, it's a, it's obviously a hard pass for me, but. Uh, I don't anything at that price points out of my price range, honestly. But yeah. it's amazing. Look, it's just fun to talk about these things, uh, even if they're it's uh, sort, of, sort of a pie in the sky kind of collectible. Uh, going to the chat real fast. General Grievous says, "Hey, Nick, Nick, are you going into the uh, MMC Bruticus series? I need to look into that, man. I'm not sure." Uh, following Freddy says, "You must play God of War. Must." So following Freddy's with uh, AV on that one. Uh, Kev's Matrix says, "Graphics look amazing." Uh, I think he's talking about uh, uh, God God of War as well. Uh, following Freddy says this week's homework assignment: you must play God of War. <laughs> no, I mean they they, 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 made a, they made a documentary about this game. I think it's I think it's free on YouTube, but it's like an hour and a half, and it's just uh, you know just talks about all all I mean all the elements, different elements that went to making this game, and you know it's just um, you know a lot a lot of love went into this game. It's much I I, I haven't played the other ones. I play, well, I've played them a little bit, but this is this is on a whole new level. Yeah, of, of storytelling. I mean, it really packs an emotional punch, and uh, you know the main the main story is basically um, it's a father and son journey, and they're going as you can see, they're the the mother's passed away, and they're going to spread her ashes in her homeland, and uh, that's that's where where it takes you. But I mean, it's you know then they encounter they encounter basically a, a myriad of Norse gods. And, okay, cool. It's yeah, it's just fucking great, man. Just <laughs> you gotta try it, man. All right. <laughs> I got a big long weekend coming up. Maybe no. I'll try to play it, man. I, I mean, I, I wanna, I wanna watch you guys play this game like the first time you throw the the, Le the Leviathan axe, you know, and it comes back to you, and you feel that vibration, and it's just like you feel like a badass. It's just so goddamn satisfying. But, Sweet. That, yeah, that is awesome. So. So we we're going to talk a little retro gaming, or game, not retro gaming, but gaming in general tonight, retro and modern, um, just to kind of get into our uh, our uh, discussions uh, uh, sect uh, portion of the program tonight. Uh, so, uh, Av, would you say that this is uh, your favorite modern game? Yeah, I, I would. Um, you know, um, as far as uh, you know, God, God, God of War, uh, I like, I love the Batman Arkham games. Those are very well done um they, they they made they made like four of them but there's they really only consider it like three as part of the part of the trilogy but i mean you could be brand new to batman and be be an expert after playing those games like as far as like knowledgeable about all the batman characters and the and the back history uh fa fantastic games uh and then i also uh i love the mass effect trilogy but right now this is the game this is the game i keep on i i mean i, I finished it two i beat it two years ago and i still think about this game you know yeah you know, there's there's just so it's it's so good. You know, and I can't wait to I can't wait to see what they do next on the next system, next generation system for for uh, this game. Yeah, it's gonna be incredible. Are you gonna buy a next gen game when it comes out? When when are they out? Uh, they they're supposed to come out uh, in November, I believe. You okay. Know? Yeah. This uh, fall. Yeah. So the 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 next game I'm really looking forward to though is uh is, you know kind of along a similar line of God of War is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay. Yeah, it's during it's uh you know it, it takes place uh during uh you know, the height of the Vikings power. And so, you know, you kind of get a sense of like what I like there. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, but uh, that, that, that looks, I, I've always been a big fan of the Assassin's Creed games. Uh, Trav, those are a little bit more time consuming than God of War. So I would just give you that heads up if you ever think about playing those games. 
yeah, but, those uh, ones you have to be careful from, man. Like God, 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 of, God of War, you can wrap up in about forty to fifty hours. You know. Oh, okay. All right. But, that's cool. But the other, but Assassin's Creed. I mean, there's so much to do. But I, yeah. I, I, I've, I've played every Assassin's Creed game, and uh, I love them, and they just keep on getting better. You know, they're just they're fantastic. And the people they got making that game, they do, they are very, uh, um, you know, they, they they get real historians, you know, to uh, do as good a job as you possibly could in a video game, you know, to uh, you know just uh, recreate these historical sites, you know. So we'll see what they have in store for this one, but I'm very excited. That is awesome, man. That is awesome. How about you, Travis? Let's talk about you for a second, man. And um, I don't mean to bring this up, but I think you have an interesting story here. Um, let's talk just a little bit for a second. Um, hopefully it's it's playing. Let's talk a little bit for a second about your experience with World of Warcraft, because you just talked about being a little bit addictive. And talk a little bit about your experience with World of Warcraft, because I, I think it's interesting, um, if you don't mind. Yeah, dude, so World of Warcraft was a game I freaking loved, man. And I got so hooked onto that. I got hooked onto that with Uncle Pat. We would we would play countless hours. Um, the problem is, is I kind of got hooked right at about the time I got married. Um, <laughs> and slowly but surely, you know, I started spending more and more time um, – um, playing the game that I probably should have with my wife for those first two years. And so, <laughs> so much so, uh, I had to throttle it back and eventually cut cold turkey, right? Yeah. Um, but, dude, I mean, countless hours having a good time with Uncle Pat, upgrading, going on big 40-man raids, doing all the above, dude. And that's where I said before, man, I could live a whole different life and just be a gamer. Um, so I kind of got to stay away because I have an addictive behavior. Um, for me, man, the most hours for me uh, is uh, certainly World of Warcraft and Call of Duty series, man. The Call yeah. of Duty, I got hooked on a couple of those that came out. Um, and then I dabbled in Halo, dabbled in Gears of War. Love all the, loved them all, right? I pretty much love all the games once I get going on them. Um, but the top two for me were for sure uh, – <laughs> uh, Call of Duty, man, and uh, oh god damn, and but I love him, I just love him. To death, man. I'm going I, back I, in, and, and I know Uncle Pat got back into it. And he's like, dude, you should come play this again, right? And I'm just like, oh man, I can't, I can't start playing yeah. this crap again, man, because I know what will happen, right? It'll be all bad. Um, but I, yeah, that's the character I had right there, man. Um, so yeah, it was wow. cool, yeah. So, so I like to think, Nick Knack, you know, the name Harry Jabba was well known back in the day in the gaming world, man, because there was a lot of people that got, you just got killed by Harry Java, you know? Right. So um, both of you guys have gamer gamer uh, gamer tags on here. Is that what I'm hearing? Gamer yeah. handles. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, that's my gamer off. handle, man. That's cool. Hey, General Grievous, uh, 2005, he's off to bed, brother. I know, man, we're, we're running, we're, we're on the, we're in the mountain time zone. A lot of guys are on the East Coast. And I just really appreciate you guys hanging with us tonight. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching tonight and everyone in the comment section can't thank you guys enough. I just, I just, just don't think I'd done that yet. Uh, just going back to the comments real fast following Freddy's, uh, going back to, uh, going back to, uh, um, uh, God of God of war it says my mother-in-law is one of the big bosses in God of war. So I hope he's not watching <laughs> brother. Um, yeah, I, I, know, I, I, I know what he's talking, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, following Freddy says love Resident Evil and Tomb Raider. Those are good. That's, those are good games. Cool. Yeah. You know, my gaming. I, I don't talk a lot about modern gaming because my gaming, my modern gaming preferences are not really exciting. I, I really am into Madden. Really into Madden. Madden comes out on Friday. I'll probably buy Madden, uh, even though it's like the same. It's just a fucking roster it's update. update. It's just a fucking roster update. Right. Same game. I, I'm, 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 I'm stupid. I, he I is. But I'll buy it. I'll buy it. And we don't talk a lot of sports on this channel, and that's by by design. But uh, I'll buy it. Um, I, you know, I just, I, it's a, it's a playing Madden is sort of an extension of my my uh, uh, of myself as a football fan. So I just enjoy the hell out of doing that. Um, I play a lot of Madden. Um, I used to play online a lot, but uh, just found that people would like rage quit on me. Like either I would get my ass kicked and I would sit in there and take it because that's what you do if you're honorable. Or people, if I was winning, people would rage quit on me, and it just got to the point where I'm like, "This isn't fucking worth it." So, um, yeah, yeah, I haven't played. I haven't played that. Not as fun as it sounds, you know. No, it's not. It's not because people are bitches. Or you get like a slow. You get like a slow. Uh, 
uh, you get a slow network speed or something. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I play a lot of Madden, uh, but I should probably try Gods of War. I, I do. I, I, I've been wanting to get into a, into a game that's not a sports game. Uh, so that would probably, it sounds like a pretty good one to, to go with. You know, it's a couple years old now, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I went to Target. I think it's like 20 bucks now. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, they, they, like once it, once it becomes like a PlayStation greatest hits, you know, after like a couple of years, it's like super, it's, it's real cheap. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we're looking at a little playthrough of uh, Castlevania. Castlevania. This is from, uh, this is from, Nin uh, we, we showed the other two game uh, games we showed were from the uh, parent companies uh, that made those games, uh, PlayStation and, uh, and then uh, Blizzard respectfully. Then this is from Nintendo complete just to give credit. Uh, when I'm sharing another YouTuber's YouTube uh, videos, uh, just give credit where credit is due. This is Nintendo Complete. I don't know them, but uh, I'm sharing their video. I hope they I hope they don't mind. Uh, this is just a playthrough. Uh, just to talk a little bit about retro games because that's more my sweet spot. Um, real fast to finish up the show tonight. Uh, Av, what is your very earliest video game memory? Okay, uh, let's see. My uh, my very earliest. Well, you know, I and I apologize because I actually I usually prep you guys with show notes, but I'm throwing that one in. I'm just throwing a monkey wrench in. Uh, you know, uh, one Christmas in Oregon, I got an Atari. But I would say uh, my best early video game memory was uh, when we bought it when when I bought a Nintendo with my own money. Oh, uh, we had a we had a garage we had a we had a garage sale, and I made like. I made a lot of money. I forgot what I sold uh, of my toys, but I, I made like 140 bucks and I, I had enough money to go buy a Nintendo. And I went and bought a Nintendo and Super Mario Brothers. And I was I played I I you know came home that morning like a, I went to KB's toy stores like right when it opened and bought that sucker and I played Super Mario Brothers until about two two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know I was just I couldn't I could I was just so blown away at what how i mean how much of a leap it was you know from atari how much better it looked and i just i mean i remember i kept on telling uh, one of my friends i was just like it's like a cartoon man it's a cartoon i'm playing a cartoon i can't believe i'm playing a cartoon you, you know tell me like, that dude <laughs> what, what, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't believe it you know i, I yeah. was just so uh you know yeah i mean nintendo was just a whole entire different world you know i mean every a lot of kids had atari but i remember when nintendo came out that was just a that was a game changer you know, as far as uh, the whole entire video game world, and I just, you know, you're playing this Castlevania right here. I mean, that takes me back to, you know, 1987 when I'm a sixth grader. And just, uh, I, I remember when I beat Dracula, you know, and I was just like, you know, I, I woke up early and uh, I beat Dracula and I, I was almost late to school, you know, but, uh, you know, I, it was more important to be Dracula that day. <laughs> That's awesome. It's obviously more memorable that day. Yeah, yeah, totally. I don't well, remember. You're probably straight on the early age, man. I'm proud of you. Yeah, no, I, I have no idea what we learned that day, but I remember beating Dracula. That's for damn sure. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. How about you, Travi? What's your earliest video game memory that you can think of? Yes. Uh, so my first memory is a system, and that's when we got the C128 knickknack. Uh, that's the Commodore 128. It was the successor to the, C the Commodore 64 that was more popular, actually. Um, so we got the C128. I actually don't remember the games on there, um, um, the names of them at least. But I remember playing that early, early when I was young. The biggest game that I can remember was on the Intellivision Pitfall. I got hooked. Me and my brother, man, we got hooked on the Intellivision and Pitfall and played that over and over again, man. Freaking loved every minute of it. Yeah, I was an Atari kid myself. We had a 2600, but I, I was jealous of the next door neighbors who had an Intellivision because it looked better. It looked better. It's like Dude, you had the disc. The disc was brilliant on the Intellivision. Yeah, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be yeah it was. It'd be like my gaming system's better than they didn't say gaming system, but our our gaming system's better than your gaming system, and I and I'm like, no, it's not, it's not. Yeah, they were right. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good analogy. Yeah, I remember like yeah, the Atari. It just never felt, it never felt like the best system out there. You know, no. dude, television killed it, man. They really did. Yeah, I mean, you got to respect the twenty six hundred for what it was, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my two earliest gaming memories was. Going to um, my family went on a vacation. We lived in Montana when I was a kid, so it was very rural. But we went to a hot springs resort in in Montana, and we stayed at what was 
a very large hotel for for me at the time. Obviously, I was a rural kid uh, growing up in Montana. So we stayed at a, a, what was kind of a resort. It had a big pool and a huge lobby. And in that lobby, there must have been, I mean, I was a kid, so it, it, it felt like 100, but it was probably like 20. But there was like 20 arcade cabinets in that lobby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm like six. I'm like six years old. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, the, 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 you know, and I just remember just like, just like the sounds coming out of that lobby from all those cabinets, all the different sounds of people playing all these different, you know, space and, and, uh, yeah, just all the sounds, all the video games going Frogger was down there. And I just remember hearing all the sounds just emanating up the stairway. And I just was like, I wanted quarters and my parents, <laughs> You know, my parents, you know, my parents were boomers and this is the beginning of the video game, you know, craze and they didn't understand it. They didn't get it. And they're like, that's a waste of money, Ryan. No, you're not getting quarters. Why don't you get ready? We're going to go to dinner soon. And I just remember just staring at that lobby. And I remember like, I remember like I, I, I got to kind of look around a little, little bit. I was a little guy, so I, I didn't get a lot. I was not a very uh, short, uh, long leash at the time, but I remember like going up to the game and pretending to play it. You know, when the demo was going, yeah. you remember doing that shit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember doing that. I just remember that I made me fall in love with arcades. That's why I got the fucking arcade one ups in the, in this room, probably because of my experience at that hot springs resort. Um, seeing those, I mean, the, I mean, Hey, the pool was great. I love swimming as a kid, but Holy shit, that, that lobby. Man. So are you saying a couple of quarters could have saved you hundreds and Ooh. hundreds of dollars as an adult? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, the the core, the thing with the the memory with the quarters, like wanting quarters, that takes us back, takes me back to the Pizza Hut, and I mean this this, this lady was playing Miss Pac-Man on a uh, tabletop, and she had all these quarters lined up, and they called her table, and she came up to me and said, "Do you want to do you want to play Miss Pac-Man?" And she gave me all her quarters. No and, shit. And to this day, I mean, it's like yeah. that, that. I still feel like that was a great woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you bet, that, man. she is a saint yeah. <laughs> you know i mean just how much that blew my mind at like five or six and it's just like all these quarters for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. mother Teresa visited you in person yeah. man yeah. That, woman, I mean, that woman is probably dead now but she'll never know how much happiness and what a great man oh my god she totally yeah i mean that that i'll never forget that <laughs> that is amazing what a nice lady i go into the chat real fast um let's see here uh Falling Freddy says Avengers comes out next Friday with with Madden. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about buying that one. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Kev's Matrix says old school gaming is fun. Beating ancient NES and NES SNES after decades. That's what I've been working on, man. I I've been working on this goddamn Castlevania game. I can't beat Dracula, <laughs> you guys know. If you can follow me on Nicknack uh, Nicknack on Facebook, I've been I've been trying. But I did beat Mike Tyson the other day. That was a, that was awesome. Although I beat Mike Tyson a couple times. I, I'm telling you, it's the triple boomerang, man. You gotta you gotta jump up and throw three boomerangs. But I can't get to him with the triple boomerang, man. It's well, like, I I don't know why why you can't do that. I don't know, uh, but I mean that that's how that, that's how I beat him. Well, apparently, eight year old you is better than forty four year old me. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, you're too hard on yourself, man. But you know, <laughs> when it happens. You'll feel great. Oh, uh, I, I, I actually do think I beat Dracula like in the mid two thousands, but I can't quite remember. I can't remember if I beat Dracula or I watched someone else do it. You know how memories get kind of convoluted. Yeah, you know I yeah. can't remember. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Falling Press says best gaming memory was an audience behind me watching me beat Dragon's Lair in the arcade. Now Dragon's Lair is the Don Bluth game, which yeah. Like, the trial and error to get through but it's all based off don bluth's animation it was like a cartoon in yeah. a video game it was so yeah. cutting edge do you guys I remember could, that? yeah i could i could never play that game because i was just watching the cartoon man you know it was just uh you know and it, it was uh you know i was just more i couldn't i couldn't stay focused while playing that game and it cost it cost like a lot back then too i think it cost like 50 centers right yeah it was probably like 50 cents back in like the mid 80s all right you know, so that that game always threw me for a loop. I could never uh, justify playing that one. I'd watch people play, but they just—I mean—they'd be shoveling like five bucks in that thing to try and beat it. So yeah, I understand what that—I understand what the commenter is saying. You know, I mean, that's a big accomplishment. 
You know, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it, it was uh, notorious for like sucking quarters. Yeah, no, it was. It was well, it was all these games were made to suck quarters, but yeah, no, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Kev's Major says Dirk Dragon Slayer, most pricey uh, diff game back in day. Good, good by paper out money. Yeah, we all blew paper out money. <laughs> yes, I had the paper out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin's Matrix says, might as well burn my money. Yeah, no, totally. I remember like burning through money trying to play uh, Street Fighter at 7 Eleven uh, back in middle school or high school. Yeah, I remember just like burning through like quarters playing Street Fighter at 7 yep. Eleven. Um, Danny Lee says, my fondest memory is learning the Konami code for 30 lives. What's the Konami code, everybody? Up, 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 up down, 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 left, down, right, left, right, 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 yeah, I, I took a, I took my son to see Wreck-It Ralph like eight years ago, <laughs> right. and uh, when they when they busted out the Konami code, man, that was just like, oh my god, this is such a great movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Yeah. Fucking awesome, man. Fucking awesome. Yeah, no, my other video game memory is of course getting R twenty six hundred. Uh, got it for Christmas, dude. That was a lot of freaking money. Like I went back and like priced those with inflation. It was like they're like three, four, five hundred dollars oh, back in the yeah. day. Those those games yeah. were like 40, 40 bucks back in the eighties. Yeah, that's yeah, incredible. insane. With when you factor in inflation, holy shit, my parent our parents spent a lot of money on those. Yeah, they yeah. really did, man. They hooked us up. Yeah. Uh, now I felt a little gypped, and I love I love my parents. I hope they're not watching. And and this is such a this is such like a this is such like a, a spoiled dumb uh, kid thing to say, but when I got my twenty twenty six hundred. Now, I, my dad, my dad was a lifelong Sears employee. My dad was a Sears guy. Everything we owned had Sears on it when I was a kid. I had Sears underwear like that. That old school Sears logo in the rectangle is like burned in my mind because everything in our house was bought at Sears because my dad was a Sears employee. We got dis employee discount. You know, I had underwear made at Sears. I every one of my undershirts Sears. We had, <laughs> we had pencils made from uh, made at Sears. I, I, some of the artwork in our basement was the Sears Tower. You know, wow, that's hilarious. This, we had this like wow, Sears swag in our that's basement. A that's a company man right there. He was a company man. He was very <laughs> much a company man. Um, again, like everything I owned was 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 from Sears. My tennis shoes were from Sears. Underwear was from Sears. All my clothes, my jeans were from Sears. Um, all of our appliances were from Sears. Our television was from Sears. And yes, my Atari 2600 was from Sears. It was an Atari 2600 Sears brand. Uh. And so it didn't have the standard. Um, it didn't have the standard Atari uh, joystick like this. Oh, no, no kidding. Yeah, if you ever look it up, you ever look up the Sears Atari 2600, it was longer. The joystick, was, the joystick itself was nubbier. And instead of having one button on top, it had two buttons on the side. That's crazy. Yeah, that was my Atari 2600. And it, was, it worked great. It was a fine system. But it was always like this. When I said, we want an Atari, this is what I thought we were going to get. And, of course, we get the Sears Roebuck Atari. And it's yeah. crazy that back in the day, because that's there was like the, 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 the intellectual properties and copyright laws were so loose back then that any company could make a, 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 you know, a, a fake Atari 2600 and legally sell it. That's yeah, that's wow. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating, huh? Huh? I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. So I wish I had. I should have put up. A, I should have gotten a picture of it for the video. I forgot to do that. Uh, yeah. So totally. Uh, Baz says, uh, uh, fondest memory is watching uh, Dominican Johnny elbow a little kid in the head for continuing to cheese him in Street Fighter. <laughs> so, <laughs> d d Baz is Baz is a New York guy, man. I, <laughs> I imagine this is pretty rough. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Ginty's in the house. What's up? Says Ginty's here, man. Sorry, I'm just. Up, he says, "Please start over." Yeah, we'll yeah, do. It. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll just start. yeah. Yeah. Bass says, "I couldn't believe he actually did it, but a lesson was learned that day." <laughs> that is awesome, dude. That is awesome. Yeah, we. I remember. Um, I remember this isn't a video game memory, but I remember we went to Seven Eleven to uh to my my friends and I, and I don't think you were there, Trav. This would have been in high school. But I remember uh, uh, some friends that you know, we were hanging out in the parking lot in 7-Eleven, probably after we ran out of quarters. And we were hanging out in the parking lot, eating or drinking our big gulps. And it was just like some scene out of Beavis and Butthead. This dude like flies up in a muscle car, like, like, a, like an old Camaro, this old beater Camaro, gets out of the muscle, gets out of the muscle car and starts running as like, get the fuck out of here, you little fucking shits. And we're like getting on our bikes and we couldn't like get on them fast enough. He's like, get out of here. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I totally remember that. It's like Baz's story reminded me of that. Um, it was like something like totally out of Beavis and Butthead. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're just like, oh my god, we're like pedaling as fast as we can. Leave. I remember. Uh, I remember like coming up for your birthday party. Like we were like eighty eight. Like we were in seventh grade, and your mom took us to the arcade. And uh, apparently, I got too close to these guys playing Ghost and Goblins. These guys that look like they're in college, and they just turned around and like one of them just looked at me like, "What the fuck are you looking at, kid?" <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, I was very shell shocked because Fort Collins is very different than Northland, you know, at that time, you know. And I was just like, oh my god, are they gonna kill me? <laughs> Poor Avi. I tell you what, at the arcade in the '80s, man, bad things could happen, man. That was a, that was a rough part of town, man. Was just being in the arcade. It could, man. I remember being at the uh, at the old Red Baron arcade in the Westminster Mall, and. Uh, you know, there was like they, they brought in uh, older, older, older kids. I'll say, and yeah. uh, they were a little more rough and tumble than we were. Yeah, uh, but I'm sure it's not as bad as what Baz experienced. Uh, he says, uh, Baz, says <laughs> Baz says, don't cheese Dominicans at Street Fighter in a laundry mat. So uh, that's uh, and I just want that that NBC now you know logo. Yeah, yeah, right. no. so, so if there's anything to learn tonight. <laughs> Uh, remember when people claim next in a video game by putting their quarter up on the side of the screen? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, yeah. The next quarter. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that totally. I totally remember like not being aware of that rule, and somebody, I was like behind somebody waiting to play, and somebody put the quarter there, and the, like they, they skipped, they skipped ahead in line, you know, and I was, I was just so pissed. I was just like, what do you mean you put a quarter there? You know, I'm, I'm standing behind the guy waiting to play Contra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. That's why, like when i remember like going to like the arcade uh especially the really busy one um i i i i spent a lot more time playing the old shitty games like i you know like you know i'm talking like late 80s dude when like bad dudes was out and, bad and dudes. mortal Kombat was coming out and and all these like really you know newer games were out teenage mutant ninja turtles was big at that time you know the four player teenage mutant ninja turtle at right. arcade just did a, a cab up that was really popular and i remember just playing dig dug because that was what was available you know <laughs> dude but dig dug is a classic man I know. back then it was like dig dug was lame I know. yeah that's now i love dig dug rough. And i'm just saying like you know i was like playing i was playing the pac-man and the dig dugs and the galagas because you know the the teenage mutant ninja turtles the bad dudes and you know the games that said don't do drugs on the front you know the final fights contra Contra, those were taken, man. Those yeah, were, you know, maybe I'd go. Maybe I'd go do some, throw some skee ball. You know, win some tickets, get a little stuffed animal. No, I never want a stuffed animal. It'd be more like a shitty plastic whistle. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> says, arcade fights all the time. Yeah, there were, man. People yeah, arcades. Yeah, this, the eighties were great, weren't they? Uh, this stuff that our kids will never know, man. They'll <laughs> never know the 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 love. The, the love and stress about being in an arcade. Um, the love and hate. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Skev's Matrix says, shooting pool and SIGs on everything in, arca in, on everything in arcades. Yeah. We used to go to – Trap, do you remember this? Um, there was a uh, pool hall in, uh, in our pinkies. hometown. Pinkies. Not pinkies. This was, uh, this was before we were able to drive, but pinkies was cool. Okay. There was a pool hall in our hometown. It was, called, it was over by the old Burger King. It was called Rack and Q. And oh yeah, the Rack and Q. Yeah. had ran. They had some. We weren't into pool then, but Rack and Q had some video games there, including like Rampage was one of them. I remember yeah. riding my bike up to Ram to Rack and Q with my friends and playing Rampage. That's a good memory. But you know, we're all like we're just like little kids in like seventh grade in this like smoky ass pool hall. You know, with all these dudes like gambling and shit, and we're just like pumping quarters into Rampage. You know, good times. I don't think my parents. <laughs> I think my parents approved of that one. I think they knew I went there, but they didn't approve of it. <laughs> yeah, good times, man. That's good great. Times. That's good times. Well, I hope I don't get a copyright claim for showing all this, uh, all this uh, Castlevania playthrough here. We've been just chatting while that's been going. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Good times, guys. Good times. Well, guys, we're at the two-hour mark, and I think it is about time to wrap this up. Unless you guys have any final thoughts, let's start with you, Trap. Uh, 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 man, no final thoughts. I think uh, just. Good times as always, man. Love talking retro gaming. That was uh, that was a kind of a fun sideshow for sure. But uh, 
Uh, yeah. Great talking with the fellows, man. Thanks for all the comments and uh, kind words. And uh, until next time. Yeah, I know for sure. For sure. How about you, A.B.? Oh, yeah, I love tonight's show. You know, that's a little bit more of my element talking about uh, gaming. So, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for accommodating that, you know. And it's just, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great time. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, I, I guess uh, as far as, like, something I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to The Boys coming out on Amazon, season two of The Boys. Nice. Dude, season one was great, man. That yeah. was a, that, that was surprising. Did you, did you watch that, Nick Mac? I did not. I should check it out. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy you it. A, it was, you got a big weekend of God of War and the boys ahead of you. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm stacked, man. I'm stacked. What can I say? Yeah. The boys yeah. exceeded my expectations when I first saw it. Yeah, oh, no, awesome, it's uh, it's really good. It's basically, you know, uh, kind of like if uh, Justice League were agents of the government. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. You know, so. Oh, and, you know, said it's, Amazon? Amazon, right? It's on, it's on Amazon Prime. But uh, okay. season, you got time. I mean, season two comes out, I think, in a couple weeks. Okay, I, got, I do got time then. But um, no, just watch it, the first episode and you'll be hooked. Yeah, nice. that's right. That's right. All right man. Sounds good, man. I'll check it out, man. Yeah, Kev's Matrix says, uh, watch the movie Mighty Ivan, fun Disney film. So, there's a recommendation for you, too. Cool. Uh, yeah, so cool. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Please like, share, comment. Please do subscribe to both channels, Nick Knack Live as well as Nick Knack's Plastic Planet. Uh, this live stream will live on Nick Knack's Plastic Planet for maybe 12 hours. Then I will be taking it down off that channel just for the algorithm's sake. But if you do want to go back and rewatch any parts of it tonight that you might have missed, uh, do uh, go over to Nick Knack Live. Uh, the link, I, once I like, like I said at the beginning of the stream, the link is in the uh, di, uh, the um, the description uh, 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 paragraph in in the in the in this stream on Nick Knack's Plastic Planet. So to click on that link, uh, go to Nick Knack Live. Do subscribe there. Uh, again, just we're I'm just trying to work out some problems with my analytics to grow the channel and the live streams were. Uh, play wreaking havoc on that. Not that they haven't been a runaway success. Um, so anyway, but I just really appreciate you guys joining us tonight. More importantly, you guys make the show, especially everyone commenting tonight. Uh, let's just love you guys so much. You guys are great. Bass. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, give my regards to Rob over at the red cup review. Uh, and yeah, guys, that's it. That's it. And, uh, everyone else, uh, for, for joining us tonight too. Kev's matrix, uh, following Freddie, uh, Danny Lee, um, uh, Ginty, General Grievous 2005, thanks for joining us earlier. Uh, yeah, just thank you guys so much for joining us. You guys make the show, as always. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, like I always like to say, guys, life is also very, very, very short. So get out there and fill it with some plastic crap. All right, guys, till next time. Later. Love you. Bye.